All right. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back to Disco Elysium. Yeah, thanks for that, Zabby. <laughs> yes, the ki- yeah, we're going to get the Kim Betrayal <laughs> ending where he, where he kills us in the end. Yeah. Well, before we get started, there was an update to Disco Elysium. Now, a little oh, bit. Oh, really? Of, yeah, a little bit of background, though. Uh, Zaum, I guess, is the the uh, developers who made Disco Elysium. It's like three people, I think. The uh, writer, artist, and, you know, another writer, I think. Yeah. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not big on that. But they were bought out <clears throat> by an Estonian businessman. Kind of, uh, you know, it's it's kind of shady. There was a nasty uh, court thing that got settled, and it's, 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 it's just bad stuff all around. And uh, the sequel is coming. There is going to be a sequel. And uh, you should temper your expectations, but be optimistic about it. Because now we have what's called Zaum Studio UK, who uh, own Disco Elysium now. Zaum, as we know it, are gone. The, the, like three de- the three devs, they split up. They, they, they broke up. They're like the Beatles and they split up. So uh, now Zaum Studio UK have full reign of Disco Elysium. And that has led to the latest update we call Collage Mode. Ooh! Collage mode. Yeah, yeah, y'all saw that. Uh, yeah, whatever. Okay. Uh, yeah, this mode contains spoilers. Yeah, no shit. So, it is really? literally a collage mode where you can just make oh. your own little guys. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Kill this fucking crying. That's what fucking the fuck? Stu- Oh my god, you could just put like anything. Dude! Alright, so select. How do I. Okay. I see. Use the right stick to select here. And you can. What can we make him say? I can't, I can't read that yellow. Man. Oh, jeez, that's a terrible Oh my god, really? It should be black. Like, what the heck? Oh, that's a terrible choice. Ah, oh, come on. The real <laughs> devs wouldn't allow this to happen. Psh. Yes, you can now make their fan ships canon because of this. So, oh my uh, gosh. let's see. <laughs> Put like Kim, different heads on the bodies. I love. I love you. You. Yes. Yes. Kim, I love you. Yes. And then, what can Kim say? No. <laughs> back. Come on. Get back. <laughs> I'll get back to work. Get back to work. Yes. <laughs> and then couldn't be like, ha, look at that. He got shut down. Fucking pig got shut down. What the loser? Who can believe him? Oh jeez! Put the Kuno's real fucking care. Put the real Kuno's body in there. Right. Yeah. And uh, then put his put that head on him. Yeah. There. You <laughs> can edit him too. Uh, like they have different poses and all that. Kuno's walking frame by frame at three frames, three frames per second. Kuno doesn't fucking care. <laughs> yes. Right. Okay. So so he's like jump. Wait. Oh shit. <laughs> you fucked it up. Damn it. Uh, you made another. There's two room. fucking Kuno's. There's two Kuno's. <laughs> oh Jesus! Stop it. Okay. Remove. Remove. Re- hold to remove. Oh God! The whole okay. shit. Okay. You know, you know this was made for PCs first and consoles second, you know, just saying. Anyway. Yeah, have them, like, <laughs> jump in the air like that. And then... Okay, yeah. Then place him there. Yeah, this interface is weird. Pretty weird. No, uh, put, put his body up underneath the head. I'm trying to reach the head. There we go. No, because you don't want to put it over the... Oh. I'm dead, bro! I'm fucking dead! Oh. What's with these two lines in the middle? What else we got here? Oh, I got a background. Oh, background. 
Well, these, these are filters, it seems. Ah! Whoa! Whoa! What the? It's dripping out! Whoa! Uh, uh, Whoa! Hmm. Looks like they got snapped. Happy and uh, end uplifting, sad and depressing. Oh. Happy and uplifting. All oh, the colors sad are changing too on that one. Oh. A lot of neat filters, but uh, don't think we'll be using any of those. How about all right, uh, actual places? Uh, how about well, let's, let's keep it early game oh. here. So, uh, how about out on the murder? See, wait, where was this at? No. Abandoned park. Oh, there's in front of his. There we go. Yeah, the whirling in rags. Yeah, there we go. Apply. Apply. Okay. Close. Did you hold it? Close. Okay. Jeez. I can't, <laughs> I can't read this. Fucking. It's so bright. I don't like it what in the yellow. Do? Really? What were they thinking? They really should have put like a background around. But, but, but I mean, look at location there in, in the center. You know. You know what that's though? It's got to be our TV because it looks fine on my iPad. I'm looking at the capture, and that favorite still looks kind of yeek. I mean, white on yellow? That just sounds wrong. No, it looks way worse on the TV. Look. Like, I mean, I... That's still... It's ridiculous. <laughs> yellow! Yellow, no! All right, well. What can we do with this now? Maybe I can, uh... Have him turn and... Turn. Okay, and... He's saying I love you by facing away from him. <laughs> He's presenting himself to- Damn it! I can't- <laughs> yeah, Alright, you know what? I, I, th I think we're done here. <laughs> I, th I, think, I think we're done here. Let's just get back to the game at hand. Oh, yes. That's great. Oh, yeah! Are you done playing with your dolls now? Shut up! It's part of the game! Well... When last we left off, we were about to speak to the union boss, Evrart Claire. <clears throat> we got plenty the of health. Container and, guy over there. And we got plenty of health and plenty of magnesium, so we we are prepared to take on the union boss. Let's go. He lives in a pallet house, I see. He lives in one room. Before you is a walrus of a man seated behind a large a walrus desk. Of a man. He looks up from his work, not the least bit surprised to see you. He looks like Wayne Knight. <laughs> With a little great bit. Effort, he straightens himself up in his chair, yet says nothing. He simply stares at you. With a mixture of expectation and impatience, well bottled. Are you in charge of the dock workers? Welcome, Mr. Dubois, Mr. Kitsuragi. It's uh, good of you two to stop by. Please, have a seat. He gestures to a tiny chair opposite to his giant desk. This fucking chair. I'm Evra. It's Evra just, Claire. look how little it is, Evra really. The union here in there's only one. Oh, I guess there is two. No, there's two. I'd offer you my hand, but unfortunately, my health prevents me from getting up. You understand? He looks extremely comfortable. The tiny folding chair, on the other hand, looks like a torture device. This fucking chair. You go ahead. Oh my god, is this chair gonna kill us? So my first playthrough. You sit in this chair, you immediately take damage. Oh god! Because it hurts. And then you're gonna take another hit at your mind because of what he's going to end up telling us. Oh no! Talking to him is dangerous, but it is something that we really need to do if we want to get things rolling. What the Whatever fuck? Whatever okay. he has in store for you, it can't be good, he thinks. I'll do my best. So we got to be brave here. We, it's, you know, we, 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 dr it. we drank ourselves to death last night, and we, this is one of the many lumps we're going to have to take because of it. Here we, we go. We can do it. We can do it. Come What's on. with this Dubois stuff? You're getting some seriously bad vibes from that. Why are you calling uh, me Mr. Dubois? Please, Mr. Well, Dubois. I was gonna say, why can't we just stand? In a civilized manner, as equals. Take a seat. I insist. He is magnetically trying to gravitate you towards that chair. It's nothing. Yes, that's probably right. I don't sit. It's, it's kind of my thing. Forget about it. 
filter it out. Let's see if we can make this work. Very well, Mr. Dubois. I respect a man with strong huh. convictions. We're not going to get too have hit by this chair. I'm not doing one it. One of which is that I will not engage with any man who won't face me at eye level. Should you find yourself more amenable in the future, I'd gladly resume our conversation. So he won't then, talk to I'm us unless we me. sit God in this godforsaken chair. You're no titan of volition, buddy. He's got you in a Take fort. a fucking seat then. Sit down or leave. Sit down or leave. Got you in a fork. All right. Take I a seat. I, 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 need, uh, I need I need I need your guidance. I need I need your spiritual power to help me through this. I shall give it. Give good vibes, for we are about to take on the chair. <sighs> take a seat. Excellent, Mister Dubois. I can see that you are a reasonable man. And reasonable men. Reasonable oh, men try to wink back. To one another. Wink back. So tell me, how can the head of the Debardes Union help a representative of the Revishal Citizens Militia today? The chair. Ow! Oh. Oh. God, no! It took half our arm away! That was a challenging was a pain. Fuck? That was a challenging pain threshold check. You have to be some sort of CIA agent to not find pain in this. Oh. It's violating your backside. Who does that? Who ah. would do this to people? Well, we can press left at any time and just get that oh, right back up. Oh shit! There we go. Yep. Mm. Uh, by the way, I heard you got a rather rude reception from a certain Lawrence Gart. Some people have no manners. It pains me to say. I know, right? This should take care of that nonsense. It should be sufficient to cover a gigantic, your gigantic, enormous days check. And patch over your differences with a cafeteria manager. Go ahead, take it. Wow. What? Twenty-five real. Twenty-five real. You. I have more in my pocket. I found from around town. Wait, you know Gart? Yes, I know <laughs> Lawrence. He's a real character. No union man in him. A real piece of work that boy is. With a grin, he points to the checker game. Uh, it's like you're on a game show. At least. The comically a large check. It's a comically large check worth 25 real, which still won't cover anything that we've got. You can take that comically large check and shove it up your ass. We want to be nice to him. He's. Why? He's got. Uh, he's not nice to us. Okay, fine. You can take that comically large check and shove it up your ass. Okay, okay. I respect a man with principles. No handouts, then. Now, I'd like to set your mind at ease about one other matter. Your lost gun. Let me assure you, union people are of course. as speak. I've got my best yeah. hound looking for that lost gun. The hound's out looking for it. His slug-like lips move, but all you hear is an echo. Lost gun. Lost gun. Lost, lost gun. gun. Lost gun. Lost gun. Lost gun. Lost gun. Lost, Lost gun. Uh, oh, we're gonna die if we don't heal! No! Black hole of fear. We only have only one... Words uh, just, just one health in our mind. Lost. We are this close to a mental breakdown. It's a good thing we had plenty of magnesium, though. When he said, don't worry, he actually meant be very worried. How do you know about my lost gun? I know everything, Harry. Right now, I of know course. that you're worried. Don't be worried. Everything's going to be all right. I don't believe you. This is about the equivalent of, of a mob boss saying, I'm going to take care of you. As long as you do a little something for me. And it's, it's never a little like something. You, it loaded. you didn't lose a loaded gun. Local children aren't out there playing with it right now, pointing it into their own mouths. It's in a safe place. What? I just know it. I have a feeling everything's going to be all right. Uh huh. It was loaded. There were two bullets in it. <laughs> oh God, this is not going to go um, well. We have good. We have good composure. If it weren't for the fact that we're scared and we're in immeasurable pain. Oh my God. Oh God. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh God. Let's see if we if we don't panic. God. You're Fuck. Your knees so what? Men can cry too. 
Men oh, also geez. cry. You're about to cry because you lost your gun. <laughs> so what? No Men cry too. <laughs> so what? Men can cry too because those children are going to shoot themselves with it. Right? You want to cry? God, you'll <laughs> Whatever you do, don't cry. He'll he'll think you're disgusting. I mean, it didn't have to be like you know a straight up sob fest. Like, like you could just be like you know, those children. <laughs> no, those we're, children. They're, they're gonna find my gun and they're gonna shoot Mr. themselves. Clint, you understand? There's some, it's a dangerous weapon out there in this already cruel world. <laughs> children killing themselves. I can't take that. Mr. Dubois, you don't look so good. I don't think I've looked good. You don't look so good either, dude. But, you know, you know we're not judging. I don't think I've looked good for the past 15 years. <laughs> oh, another oh, oh, God. <laughs> oh. It's at four. What is he trying to pull here? You need to cool the fuck down. You need to cool Shit. the fuck down. All right. All right. Cool the fuck down. He's right. He's right. Okay. Composure is giving me the business today. Tell you what. Okay, Kim. How about you fucking sit in the other chair? You know, take take a couple hits as well. Okay. So we're kind of blanking. Do uh, we do we just slide in the, down the chair, or uh, do we just kind of blank out some more? Keep sliding down the chair like a jello. Just keep shot. sliding down the chair like a jello shot. Mr. Uh, are you okay? Can I get you a glass of water or something? Are you having some kind of medical emergency? Without question. Maybe you could use your hands somehow. No. Uh, kind of oh yeah, like man, I'm fucking great. <laughs> that Mr. Dubois act right back at him. So I got He's fucking great. Mr. Uh, I'm 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 good, you know. Yeah, like I'm good up here, you know. Uh. Or can we get that? <laughs> I'm melting. <laughs> Actually, this chair, uh, no, dude, the, oh, yeah, man, I'm fucking great. Yeah, man, I'm fucking great. I'm fucking Don't be great. dramatic. Don't be dramatic. Oh, I thought really? you had my back here, man. He's really? got me, he's got me by Kim. the balls, come on. What an odd demonstration of, uh, you got me, Harry. I don't even know what. As entertaining as it was. <laughs> You're just sliding down, down this outside. chair, and he's and looking at you like, what the fuck? Man. I'm just going to take our lumps as it is. Why don't we have a <coughs> chat, Mr. Claire? Okay, enough. We are here to ask you some questions pertaining to a murder investigation. I can feel the pain melt away. Thank you, Kim. Thank you. Okay, okay. We have... We passed it. Let's get back to the interviews. Quick. Here's your window. Get yourself together. All right, here we go. Get it, come on. Please. Get it together. Get it together. Fight the pain. Hurt the pain. Aren't you going to ask me how I, got, how I got in, though? Harry, honestly, I'm just relieved you didn't get a hernia. A man your age. Uh, a man my age? What are you implying? I'm at the peak of my abilities. Uh, let me, hang on. I'm probably going to break down any minute. <laughs> uh... I, too, am surprised yeah, by the resilience three. and athleticism of this tool I've been, I've been provided with. Yes. Yes, yes, Harry. You are obviously in peak physical condition. And I <laughs> with that face. And your physical prowess. Very impressive, Harry. Very impressive. <laughs> anyway, I assure you, I am a very well-informed man. Information reaches me before I even get the chance to request I'm it. I want to talk about the hanging. You called me Mr. Dubois. Why? Of course. Let us dispatch with the formalities. You call me Everard, I call you Harry. That's what the hang of corpse called you, Harry. So that's really my name? Oh my, my god. god. So it's true. I didn't want to believe it, but you are a fantastic science fiction amnesiac cop, aren't you? What are the odds of that? Uh-uh. Fantastic science fiction amnesiac hobo cop. You think I'm fantastic? You think I'm fantastic? I think the odds of that are very low. Oh, thanks for bringing me back back down to earth, there, Kim. Literally. Thanks, really. It might be a good idea to hide your confusion. I'm not really fine. I'm just talking. I mean, go down more. See what his game is first. There's got to be more. Well, uh, Robert told me that we need to hide our confusion. So should we let him know about our uh, issue? Or do we just play it play it cool and make it seem like we have the upper hand here? 
I'm gonna, uh, all right. I think we should play the upper hand. Yeah. My memory is fine. I'm just testing you. So good to hear that, Harry. <laughs> Apparently, my sources were wrong. However, if you did have a spot of memory trouble, I could help you out with my big fat folder. Mm, big fat folder, huh? Like a river of honey from his lips. <clears throat> I guess word has already reached him. No matter. No harm done. Thanks, Rhetoric. You've, uh, you really helped me out there. Are you trying to tell me you've gotten hold of some of our documents? Well, Kim's getting interested uh -oh. now. Mr. Uh -oh. Kitsuragi, would you mind? Me and Harry are talking about his lost identity right now. <laughs> Do you Don't mind? Just jump to the folder. That's not smart. Shows you're on the edge. Do some probing first. Do you know where I live? No. Okay, so we got drama down here. We got some, uh. Ooh. All right. So we've read shipping folders before, so we got that. I think we can manage that. But let's get a little bit more out of him first. What's my full name? It's Harry. Harry Dubois. Wait, I thought you were Harry Dubois. No, I'm really, really not. I'm you really, really not. Harry. I don't really like it. Don't be silly, Harry. Harry Dubois, that's a real man's name. A union man's. <sighs> of course. <laughs> Mr. Kitsuragi doesn't seem even slightly empathetic to your memory, <laughs> Harry. I, however, wish to help you any way I can. Do it. What kind of cop does it say I am? Harry, you're not simply a cop. You're a star. A bright shining He's star a in the super hobo cop. sky. Outshining all other stars. You're a superstar. Yeah, he fucking gets it. That's what I like about you, Everard. <coughs> you get me. Of course <laughs> I do, Harry. And I'm gonna help you shine. I'm gonna put you on all the big stages. Your name in giant neon letters. Harry Dubois. The giant neon hmm. sign reading Harry Dubois. Hanging from I don't, I don't think I want the world knowing about me and my the way to abject failure of a self. Yeah. Somewhere in Mirova. But I mean, are we a failure? From our record, we did pretty good. Well, we, we, I think we're kind of one now. We, we let this case get way too far ahead of us or something happened. All right, well, uh, why don't we have another look at that folder, huh? Yes. This is a red check. One chance. Here we go. Do it. As you yeah! Everard covers it with his hand and pets Excuse me, Mr. Clare. Because it's not I believe you're bullshitting me. Folder. It's just another one of those brown That's not an RCM folder. Because we looked in that cabinet last episode, looking at the boring files, we recognize that, wait a minute, that's not an RCM folder. That's okay, right. Hey, Harry, you got me. This is from the Census Bureau, not the RCM. Those Census Bureau people are absolutely corrupt. You should do something about them. He got the name wow. of the Census Bureau and everything else from your actions here in Martinez. Maybe so. Maybe his uh, spy network is not as wide as I thought it was. Yes, yes, Mr. Kitsuragi from the Census Bureau. Like I said, now what? I'm actually a very busy man. So is there anything that was else good. I can do for you? What Harry? we did there was really good. We ruffled his feathers. We was like, oh, I don't know. Okay, you, you got a couple fingers on me, but not the whole hand. That means he doesn't really know anything about me. Uh -huh. You don't really know anything about me. You know even less than I do. Oh, shit. In pity, the mystery of you will have to remain a mystery for the time being. So the Census Bureau says my name is Harry Dubois? Yes, that's what I said. Try to keep up, okay? Let's move on. All right, well... I'm at Joyce. I want to talk about the hanging first. Oh, of course. That's your main thing here. That's why you're in Martinez. I know everything that goes on around here, and I would love to discuss it with you. I mean, it's no secret that the lynching is connected to the strike. So much to talk about. Honestly, it's been weighing on me so heavily. I understand you need to interview me. I sense there's a but. But there's a thing that's been keeping me up at night. I want to talk about the hanging. I mean, if we could just calmly talk, exchange information, we could blow this thing wide open. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, yes, that sounds good. Let's do that. All right, Kim's on board. I'm on board too. But I can't think straight with this thing weighing on me. You're police officers, aren't you? I have a crazy idea. You guys are basically door opening machines. Incredibly talented at opening doors. What? Kim, is that true? Are we door opening machines? 
I'm not sure I understand. <laughs> if you're asking us to break down someone's door, it's not going to happen. Come now. I just need you to go open a little door for me and leave it unlocked. I don't think thing. so. Absolutely so breaking and entering? About it. No, I don't think it's breaking and entering. I think it's just unlocking a door. An excellent opportunity presents itself, sire. Why don't you just you open it yourself? The of the Archelia. Pretend to play into his hand. Okay, no, no. Then, Whose door is it? Wish, bend his efforts towards your own. I love drama because drama is the part of your brain that wants to, like, you know, to lie, to uh -huh. deceive, to, to bring up a drama of a scene. And he calls me sire. <laughs> uh, that's a drama. But you mislead me a lot, drama. All right. We could win the trust of the arch liar, pretend to play in his hand, then bend his efforts toward our own. Let's see. Is it electrochemistry? That's the drug one. Yeah, electrochemistry. I like him too. I don't like him. He's like, he's, oh, look, he's fucking there's hilarious. drugs right there on the table. You right. Should take him. Right he's now. like, hey, drugs. And oh, look, there's rum right there on the counter. Sure, <laughs> it's spilled, and it looks like there's flies in it. But you know you gotta have some. <laughs> I really don't electrochemistry. Thank you. I'm fine. <laughs> All right, whose door is it? Can I get some info about that? Oh, no one's. It's just a weasel. A weasel lives there. Nothing for you to worry no. about. No! What do you mean by a weasel? What do you mean by a weasel? A loud, blabbering weasel. When weasels feel no one is watching... Is this weasel human? Foolishly. Kim? Just go there, unlock the door, and leave it open. It's been such a burden on me, Harry. I just... I bet you don't even know anything about the hanging. Discuss business with you. Say that. Bet you don't even anything about the hanging, yeah. Harry, my dear friend, I am what people call a local bigwig. I know everything that goes on in Yet yeah, you place. didn't know anything about me. Sure. We gotta we gotta show we're a good cop though. Yeah, I, I can't like, accept this, really. Refuse the task for now. Because I got a feeling, no matter what, we're gonna have to do something. He wants us to open that fucking we, door. We right? gotta do something shady. And it's gonna be not nice. Of course, Harry, I understand. But if that's the case, I don't think we'll ever find your gun. Even worse, we won't be able to speak like equals about the murder. Trust me. Whatever. From this chair, there's nothing equal about it. Perhaps this was just bad timing for you. Know that you can always come back to me. I really hope you do. For your sake, my sake, and for your gun's sake, for too. For your gun's sake, too. <laughs> It's like he only knows about my lost... See, I don't think he has my lost gun. I think he's looking for it just as much as I am. Yeah. Yes, we both... He said he had hounds out looking for it. It's like, okay. Maybe he's trying to get his hooks into the RCM because he's a corrupt piece of shit. This may be the only way he thinks. I won't hold it against you. In fact, we probably... I met Joyce. We consider later. Okay. I met Joyce, the company rep. Let you know... Let me go ahead and show my cards now. That's very nice. I haven't gotten around to her yet. I'm very, very busy, you see. Uh-huh. I hope you're getting along. You sound disgusted. One thing I want to make very clear, Harry, is that this is not some kind of union versus corporation situation. Everyone is just pals here. Is it not? Just pals? I don't yes. We're believe all trying that. to do what's best for Martin H. Don't feel like you shouldn't work with her just because you and I are such good friends. I'm not a jealous guy. Why haven't you let her in to see you? Yeah, really. If she actually wants to see me, she will find a way. Any good negotiator would. And I just don't have anything to discuss with a bad negotiator. Ever, Joyce seems to think the union is lowballing her. Yes, yes. Lowballing, of course. This isn't a casino, Harry. Real people, real livelihoods are at stake here. But everything's a casino for those rich types. His expression makes it clear. This is childish and irresponsible yeah. behavior. Okay. Let's talk about something else then. Of course, Harry. Let me just assure you one more time. It's perfectly okay to share anything we discuss here with this Joyce. This is a completely transparent organization. I have no interest in what <laughs> she is doing, but I myself have nothing to hide. Your business is your business, and I respect your privacy. Just remember, none of this is secret. None of this is secret. I feel like it goes both ways. So not only can I talk yeah. about everything I've done here, but so can he. Exactly. So let's be a little careful. everything's transparent. So let's be a little bit careful here. Tell her about 
not all of it. My brother's picture, my singing swordfish clock. Tell her how overweight I am and how I'm helping you find your lost gun. Tell her about everything. Everat doesn't mind. Well, looking at you, I think the chair makes you look fatter than you are. But, uh, that chin's not to... I don't know, where's his neck? That is a concern. It is rather interesting to tell people things about each other, isn't it? It was nice telling him about her right now. Okay, let's talk about my lost gun. Uh, that's, I've been trying to avoid it. I think this is going to be another hit to mind. Yes, your yeah. lost gun. My best men are on it. They're turning every stone, searching every playground, asking kids, grandmas, Asking kids everyone. and grandmas? Like, what? Your gun will be found, Harry. Let me assure you of that. If he it's finds it first, time, we're screwed, because then he will ever. hold it over our heads. Oh, no. Maybe even use it to incriminate us in something. Oh, the no. We gotta to find, find that gun. seems to be working with him. He might even be holding your gun hostage. Hold on. I could will he... not be blackmailed with this gun business. Oh, oh, hold on. Could he really hold my gun hostage? Who knows? Only one thing is certain. If you work with him, you're going to get it back. And working with him might be the only way to do it. <sighs> Does this mean if I do things for you, I will get my gun back? Damn it, Harry. That's exactly what it means. I'm only kidding, of course. You're only <laughs> kidding? Of course. I understand. We help you, you help us. Well, I think we're going to have to open this door for him, but I think I want to talk to Joyce first. What's in the container? What's in the container outside your office? My dear Harry, there are literally millions of containers in this harbor. I couldn't possibly remember what's in all of them. There's something special about it. It was attached to the Carlson crane. Harry, you smooth-talking son of a bitch. Time hey. is a precious resource, and I don't have enough of it to count containers with you. Sure, I, I could, though. Container, Sweet container. Talking. Maybe that's the way to go about opening the He container. hasn't told us you fucking jack shit. Because we're, we we gotta agree to help him, and then he'll tell us everything. Dude, fuck that. Ever, I'm gonna leave now, but we might talk again later. Wait, you need this to get in and out through the gate. Oh, uh, thanks. I was wondering how I'm supposed to get out. Here, you're one of us now. <laughs> a real red and white union man. Take care, Harry. Uh... So, yeah, the thing about our name, Harry Dubois. Hmm. Take a look at the old, uh, thing here, and... Name unknown, rank unknown. So... I mean, Harry Dubois sounds plausible, but he just got it from the Census Bureau. Nothing's been confirmed yet. He could be lying to us. The great arch liar after all. Well. Let's uh, get out of here and go talk to Joyce, yeah? Yeah. Maneuvering's kind of tough. Well, we basically gotta backtrack all the way to where we were. This is very nice, being able to come in here like this, because uh, most people can't get into the harbor right now, because a gigantic, muscle-bound racist is blocking the door. Oh, that's right. We'll probably talk to him. Like, we don't really need to do anything with him because we got a way in now. But uh, maybe we'll uh, talk to him just for, I don't know, a laugh. This is the way out. This door here is where you oh, take the card, right. you know, beep. And here we are. It's the entrance to the harbor. And here is our gigantic racist. Everyone say hello to Measurehead. Oh, oh Measurehead. You're the general this evening. Yeah, Measurehead. His body totally betrays his degeneracy. Now let's size him up first. What? Are you admiring my morphophysiology? So I can only see the back of you. Mm, you must be not really? to stand in the shadow of this racial pinnacle. How about your chest? Because and still say nothing. I'm sandwich. 
You are not in danger because you are no, number not three. a threat to me. My body does not betray my degeneracy. You have succumbed to a wolf. You reek of it. An invisible sword of Balrul emerges from your throat. You cannot see it, but others can. It is making the woman in my company sick. Two. <sighs> Kim, is it really so bad? It's not good. <laughs> uh, it's, it's not like good. It's like a rat crawled into your stomach, got drunk. Three. Uh, you're, you're right. I'm an alcoholic. Now, I need you to cooperate with me. No, you don't. You need to get another drink. Occidental Aplo Group B4 is done giving orders around mm. here. The influence okay. of the what? Am Sandwich Race is waning. So, do we throw the law at him or we just say, you know, come on, man? What? I'm the police. And I need you to comply now! Or, yo man, can you just help me out here? Right. The race stuff is unimportant here, I just need you to help me do my job, please. Begging for help. Attempting to pass fear for cooperation. How far the Occidental Ablo Group has fallen. You were once a noble and powerful. Well, I know why he's so he's so buff because of all these mental gymnastics he has to go through. Oh. You gave the world eugenics, electricity, and powerful weapons of war like missiles and aerostatic aircraft. You made great gains in metallurgy, race theory, and statecraft. You dominated lesser cultures. Like the deformed him the voice actor here is a Arabic rapper. Potato oh yeah? yeah. Koikos. But now your ascent to the genetic summit has halted. You are obsessed with sadness and with frivolous pop culture. I like sadness and frivolous pop culture. I mean, I heard everyone's <laughs> loving that new Last of Us show. You will be superseded. Isn't that right, babe? It is, babe. I yeah. thought he was you calling us, it. babe, for a second. I'm like, what? No, it's, it's, it's measure, measure Heads Babe. I think yeah. it's a uh, girl smoking back there. Yeah. All right, so do we say just, you know, all right, yeah, yeah, whatever, blah, 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 Rio, raise the edge. Yeah. People yeah. probably killed a man. Well, I, f I feel like no matter what we what we tell him, he's going to be like, oh, it does not matter. But you are a stupid, idiotic piece of shit who is an embarrassment to his race. You're right about all this. Now I need you to cover me as a police. Just, you know, just whatever. Like, yeah, whatever, you're right. Okay, cool. Now, in the here and now. Enough with this begging. You just you think we're begging all the time. Uh. with dignity by inviting the other races to a great world war. A great race war? No! Bring your troops to the Seminine Islands and to Boogie Street, and we will pulverize you. When you are gone, we will build a museum. What? A museum? The walls will be lined with bottles of Al Ghul, your beloved beverage. Inside, we will store the oats to homosexuality. So he wants us all to gather here, all the races of the world, have a big gigantic race war off, and then whoever is left will build a museum and honor their culture that way. While the strong get to keep living, man, this what? Guy, this guy's this guy's kind of dumb. We could internalize Measurehead's race theory. Why? It would enrich you rhetorically. Wouldn't that mean I'd have to become a semi supremacist myself? Well, not as such. What you do in the mastery of advanced race theory is up to you. You could reject the findings, sure, uh. or accept them and become an advanced. An advanced racist. An advanced racist? This is getting weird, man. What the fuck? Well, well, wait, wait, isn't Everett the union boss white? Oh, uh, don't be vulgar. White or not has got little to do with this. The race enigma runs much deeper than that. Yeah, but you still serve him. How does that factor into your life? Mr. Claire is a man of vision and means. 
He has the will to confront international capital, which is something your race naivistic communists never did. Also, to serve is noble. It takes discipline. Your petulant individualism has only contributed to your race failure. It is lax and moronic. This guy is talking and just... Oh God. My jam is a mysterious fourth thing. My jam is a mysterious fourth thing. Jam. Individualism. You have gotten these ideas from degenerate youth culture, have you not? You have picked them up from rock and roll songs? What? Rock and roll! It's true. I'm a rock and roll star yes. and a rebel. Rock and roll is morbid. Only Koikos listen to it anymore. There is no life left in it. <laughs> Our people abandoned it long ago. It leads only to neurogenerative herpes and heroin overdoses. <laughs> what the fuck is this guy on? It's like he's the god of Fox News. Ah, really? <laughs> god! He's the patron saint that Tucker Carlson bows down to. Jesus Christ! Surprised you enjoy it so much. This has happened to many of the side products of the inevitable cultural victory of the Seminese race. I don't really know who the Seminese are. I've experienced, re I recently experienced head trauma. I can see that. I can see that, okay. The I Seminese think a, new, a newly born babe can race. see I've been uh, supplanted with head trauma. The rightful masters of the Insulindian archipelago. We descend from the Areopagites of ancient Pericarnassus. You're just saying a bunch of words, aren't you, buddy? Years ago, we are the future. That is all you need to know. So you were born and raised on the islands before you moved to Ravishol? I am a descendant. The narrow streets of Ulumbuir are with me in my genetic dream. I see young Seminese women walk into the gray mass on Ile de Fontaine, waiting on immaculate conception from the pay. So you did not come from the uh. islands? No. I have heard about it on the radio. So you're not really Seminese, you're just from Revachol. I'm from Couron, and no. It is not just in Revachol. The city is central to the Simony strategy. Spreading through its trade networks, our culture. This guy's off his rocker. He is. Like, he's just saying a bunch of bullshit. Genetic secrets for today. You have extinction. Kim, what do you think about this? Yeah, I, I, I want to know what the sane guy thinks about this insanity. I don't think anything about this. We are wasting our time. I yeah! Your pedomorphic friend is right. You should leave here with your tail between your legs. Contemplating race. We could oh. subscribe to his advanced race theory. No fucking way! If maybe to contradict him. Anything about this? Anything about this racist mug I have, you racist? He does not so much as glance at the object. Is this your kind of thing? Stop showing me your pathetic cup. I have no interest in it. He had nothing to do with it. All right, fine. We're out of here. As you turn, the light catches your eye, making you squint. Where's it coming from? From a distant sunset, a stage light, flash photography, nowhere in particular. It's just what superstar law officers do. They squint. Superstar. Law officer. What the fuck? We're doing it, baby. Yeah, that's me. I've been establishing my superstardom hard lately. I even tell him, I even lie to a man to his, I, I lie to a man's face and say I'm a rock and roll star. Yep. Yeah, you have. You're a big dick cop. Big dick cop. Big Salam dick Superstar cop. hobo cop. Disco cop. Time to recede into a ludicrous fantasy world. Here we go. Camera. Lights. Action! Wait, what was that about a ludicrous fantasy world? Yeah, 
you know. Beneath it is just heartbreak, a pulmonary tract infection, atherosclerotic disease. This is where you say action and reconceptualize all that. Reinvent it as the world's first celebrity <laughs> police officer. Ah, okay, a veneer of, uh, yeah. This is the beginning of your legend. Fucking action. Fucking action! With a sudden flash, the world freezes around you, and you along with it. In an iconic monochrome solution, a black silhouette against a rasterized orange world. It's on. It's on! Yes! Right, let's see if we can't get subjects. We got a couple skill points. I think we can fit some if we don't have any room. I got some room. Okay. Our shit's compressed. That's good. All of, yeah. So, still hobo cop. Still got that going. All right. So, we have. Let's see here. Okay. Fucking. All right. Some kind of superstar. First, let's make this absolutely clear. No one is saying you're an actual superstar in the groupies and cocaine riddled with hepatitis C strikes a, a lioness pose with the with the mic kind of way. You're not Guillaume Le Million or Davy Dewis. No. You're a metaphorical superstar. <laughs> you bring that rock and roll authenticity and passion to a line of work where people don't expect or want to see it. Where some would say it doesn't belong. Law enforcement. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Got two skill points. I think we're gonna save them, you know, in case we need to retry some things. So uh, let's go. Great talking to you, Measure Head. Not really. Here we have finally reached. Uh, God? Yeah, down here is where the strike is happening. You're hazy on the notion of a scab. Smells like politics, though. Maybe it's got something to do with the flask he reaches for from time to time. What exactly is a scab? A really? Worm. Content with mere survival. They come, they want to do our job for shittier pay, screwing over both themselves and us. Everybody loses. But hold on, where'd they all come from? Beats me. Somewhere in the ground, I think. They don't seem to like them much. Gotta be bloody stupid or freaking evil to scab. Or I guess, scared maybe. But scared of what? Of who? Yeah, okay. Uh... Personally, I'd rather beg than scab. If the gentleman shouting on the street came begging, maybe they'd have gotten something. Hmm. Mm hmm Have you tried talking to them? We've explained the matters, but they don't listen. This lot would be reasonable and go home if the big guy wasn't riling them up all the time. Wait, big guy? Well, I'm not a scab, I'm a cop. <laughs> I was just messing with you. No one's ever seen a cop scab. Imagine, you cops going on a strike, but then another cop comes in and says, let us cop for less money. <laughs> Speaking of, huh. what brings the RCM here, to the wild north? Come to see the strike? Uh, any idea who killed the hanged man? The mercenary, eh? Ooh. Who the, the mercenary? Ooh. I even do Ooh. such a thing. Oh. That's new. Or at least, you know, confirmed now. Well, the merc was hanged with a very specific type of cargo belt. One often used in heavy transport areas, for example. Yeah. Harbors. What a thought. Why would noble workers resort to such a thing? Unless they were pushed, of course. Pushed? How? Your dead guy was an enemy combatant. Hold up, what's that mean? He was an agent of the opposition, attempting to undermine our honorable efforts. Did you kill him? I ain't the murdering type, but that's <laughs> a Large You said it a little too quick. Like our union have I all ain't the murdering type. With all sorts of skills. He's not lying about not doing it himself. Makes sense. Understood. This has been of limited use. Still, thank you. No problem. I wish the best to you in your search. Sure, I'm glad it's not my search. All right, nice talk. Got to get moving. Good seeing you. Call me manana. So here we are at the strike. This is the big guy rallying everybody up. Unions are a scam. Okay. Bastard! We have a right to work! And the law. Hold up and stay frosty, everyone. Cops are here. He's a full head taller than me. It seems like everybody in this town can kick my ass. 
<laughs> you here to fuck with us? Beat the honest worker down. No. Why should I? We're here to fight for a cause. Stripes usually have problems with people who have causes. Okay, then I'm thinking no. Good. But fighting for a cause here. Right to work. Right to work. Then go Besides, to work. We're not that different. It helps if people see us talking, cops and strike breakers together. Shows authorities are on our side. Builds confidence. What kind of cause are we talking about? Rights of people. Rights of workers. To have gainful employment. To make a salary. And feed their families. His manner of speaking is wooden. The tone of voice bland and uninspired. Almost as if compiling replies from a set of learned phrases. Hmm. Like this guy is a... Uh... A plant, maybe? Maybe. I don't think I've chosen any sides yet. Might be time. Don't let the fat bastards tread on you. Cops tend to side with the higher-ups, but you're essentially still workers. Well, I mean, Claire's got his foot up my ass right now, so there's not much I can yeah. do. I don't trust cops, but I can see you understand the... Right to work! Right to work! Regardless, I have some questions for you. Maybe you should ask them the questions like why we're not allowed to make a living here shame on you we have families to feed you piece of shit <laughs> so do we scott all right cat's bothering us quit now go come on cat come on what is a strike anyway when a bunch of ungrateful lazy cockroaches can't get their act together decide to block honest work for other people. What do the strikers want? Beats me. They mumble nonsense about boardrooms and workers' rights, while we have the right to work! Is that all he says, right to work? Yeah. There's something odd in the way he carries it's himself. Really His set of clothing Pink looks vaguely mismatched. The different pieces of the attire seem ill-fitting. Ill-fitting. What does that mean? His shirt is far too small and an unpleasantly tight fit. Mm. One of the overalls held up by a belt seem to fit a man with much more corpulence. You wearing new clothes? He ignores your question, choosing uh -huh. to uh -huh. talk to the emaciated workers, raising both fists in the air. The clothes are obviously not his. Silence is the answer. There's something off here. But he won't say what. There is something off. I don't trust this guy. Yeah. What exactly is your goal here? We were promised work. We'd be in there working if the bastards hadn't shut the gates. And you are unable to breach the entrance? Main gate's locked. It would take heavy ordnance to bust it open. I try to get in through the secretary's office. Door's locked. The guards blocking the way to the access panel. And I don't mean the scrawny mess monk either. I mean head measurer. Or whatever he is. Wait, head measurer? Yeah. That giant up there on the bridge you talked to. Head measurer. Won't measure head. Right. Measure head, yeah. Right behind him. How about could one guy be? You seem capable. Bad. Standing on a narrow bridge, he's got a strategically advantageous position. And he's trained. I don't know how the Union has a trained killer up there, but that one's no joke. And I mean, I don't think he's a killer. I mean, he's a big man, and, you know, and... Why don't you just talk to them? Seem, seems to be a uh, thumbs up to the whole genocide thing, but I don't know if he's a killer. He just seem, he seems like a poser to me, really. Uh-huh. He's like, I am, pro I am part of the great Simonese race, even though I was never part of the islands. I just kind of live here, but still. Have <laughs> you considered storming in, like, all of you? Why don't you go arrest them? Instead, I'm sure they've done plenty of criminal shit. They have that look. That look, huh? I think we're all just what a bunch of racists. Mean? I think we're all just a bunch of racists here, it seems. It would be better for the neighborhood if you went home, at least for now, if you can't get in anyway. No. They will give up eventually. Uh. Or get drunk. Leave the button unguarded. Then we charge. Who are all these strike breakers? <laughs> Honest men and women. With rights to work. Rights to work! 
Get it, we, yeah, we get it. Corporate interests. We came here to help the harbor run smoothly in time of crisis. If Union fucks don't want work, they ought to let in those who do want work. I have a question. Why do all these men follow your leadership? Yeah, who are you? Go, Kim, go! You go, Kim, go! Follow because I'm big and loud. Yes. They follow the rules of the market. Follow big and loud. Of the economy because they were given a job to do. You've been talking to him for quite a while now. Something is off with <laughs> this guy. Ask him where he's from. Okay, I gotta ask. Where exactly are you from? What's it to you? Uh, curiosity. I'm gonna figure out the strike mess. Big mess caused by union greed. But I only fight for the rights of people. It's not answering my question. Mm, dodge that question. Every once in a while, it's like you can see glimpses of another guy under the guise of this. I'm interested in your jobs. background. Yeah, it yeah. Seems more I already got that. I'm interested in your background. Person. We're all workers, right? Workers stick together. Came from the eminent domain. Jamrock, backgrounds in odd jobs, heavy lifting, cargo hauling, bouncer work. I know the drill. Sweet, I know bars, been thrown out from several. Maybe that's why you seem familiar. Worked at Territorial. Ring a bell? What? Never heard of it. Are you lying? We're done here. <laughs> uh huh. Well, right, everybody in this part of the game just sucks. Sheesh. Well, worse yet, the sun is going down. Day one is coming to a close here in a few hours. And we don't have enough money to pay for our room and damages. Should we, should we have taken that check? Wouldn't it help much? Hey, what about this guy? I am a gander and a hunter and a gatherer. Feel like a traveler. A simple little cadence. He seems to be making it up as he goes. I'm the law. You sure I'm are, law. my man. Yeah, people get that you are the law. You really don't have to keep saying it. <laughs> you don't. Oh, man. From another planet. Alright, yeah. what's going on here? It's the jam, my man. What's the jam? It's a traffic jam for the ages. Harbor gates up the street are shut tight. No explanation given. Workers on strike, scabs agitating. An all around clusterfuck. Wow. Yeah, yeah, no, it looks like shit. And it, I've been in there, it is shit. Meanwhile, we're all stuck here in long haul limbo for days upon days upon days. Limbo, huh? So that's where I am. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's official. He too agrees. This is the antechamber of the afterlife. Cool, so I am dead. How long have you been here? Feels like forever. Like I was born on this here roundabout and this was all I ever knew. Just me and the metal and the tires, the oil and the fumes and mazout. Mazout is an antiquated term for heavy fuel oils. This man has a barely suppressed performance history, <laughs> or he just likes unusual words, or both. I dig your style, man. Yeah. Yeah, imagine. It's been a whole week already. So tell me, what do you need? Know anything about the dead man? The one hanging behind the hostel there? He ain't one of us drivers. I know that. All accounted for. Otherwise, I haven't really asked about that. Been wasting time right here. Keep him busy. It's easy to see he's telling the truth. He's kept his nose out of the dark stuff. Busy with what? Analyzing the fundamental structural and psychological conditions of being stranded in the midst of a sea of motor lorries and their sad, despondent chauffeurs. Oh, God. Oh, this poor man. Conclusion. And your conclusion? A sense of surprise there ain't more bodies hanging from more trees. Really dig your style, wow. Tommy. Wow. Really dig your style. What are you hauling anyway? Oh, high grade narcotics, illegal firearms, stuff like that. Relax. He's merely joking. Wicked. I've always wanted a friend in the underworld. Ha, no. I'm joking, my man. <laughs> Bob runs a nice clean business. 
This hollow cargo is mostly sporting goods. You know, tracksuits and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. They usually get shipped to Grad and the Oxen. Though we've been making headway in the Il Moran market lately. That your machine behind you? This rocking beauty. Sure is. Like a rash you can't get rid of. You interested in heavy duty cargo machinery? A motor lorry, also called. Apparently I am, yes. Yep. At neighboring islands. This one looks roughed up enough to be some sort of found rust bucket. Maybe the A6. That's a found A6 you got there. Good eye, my man. Yup, she's an old one, but reliable. Me and her spent a long time together. All right, I had another, I had another question. The man taps his fingers rhythmically against his arm. Tell me more about this strike. It's like, whatever's going on over at the docks. Workers got a blockade set up, making demands, no way in or out. Going on strike would probably help you dodge a bullet or two. Maybe I should go on strike. <laughs> really? Maybe you should. Cops don't get paid much in the hours alone. Plus, you can get shot. Why not? Hmm? The RCM True. is a self-managing organization that operates on donations. We promote our own leaders. It would be like striking against your own mother. I don't know my mother, but I go, st I go on strike against no, her too for my rights! <laughs> <laughs> okay, but do continue. You were asking about the strike? Uh, uh, Alright, so what's the union demanding, do you know? Some pretty wild stuff I hear. Like a giant new power crane in half the company? Forget what exactly. They already have a Coulson! Why do they need another yeah. giant crane? I've heard talk there's a company rep in town too. Like a strike negotiator type. What do you think the company they know wants? What's up. They want to keep that money flowing in, my man. I mean, Achim. obviously. He doesn't blame them, but he's not on their side. That's for sure. Is there anything else I should know? Anything else? Yeah, this ain't really my area of expertise. I just do my job and get paid. I have things to do and places to be. All of us do. All of who? Us lorry drivers. Cam, your nurse. You still hang around here waiting for this mess to end. Most have scurried off somewhere to get drunk or high. Or laid. Not that I blame them, really. Not <laughs> you? Not my thing. Chasing transient pleasures is a drag these days. I prefer really? the examined life now. Thinking, reflecting, observing. What's better than chasing transient pleasures? Oh, here we go. Electrochemistry, <laughs> shut up! <laughs> shut up, electrochemistry! I was wondering, I'm like, we're talking about drugs, where is he? He tries his best to look nonchalant, but there's a rigidity in him, as if trying to conceal something warm and deep beneath a cool oh, still. Oh, no, no, no. No way. I can't empathize with people, but what do I see in his eyes? Look deep into his eyes. Ease into it. Don't go too far. This seems like a personal matter. Man, you look sad. What's going on with you? You really are the law, aren't you? I get that being bluntly observant and inquisitive comes with the territory, but it certainly doesn't help with your conversational skills, does it? <laughs> Maybe the full on direct. I want to know about his soul. Well, if we get more empathy later on, uh, we'll ask him again. But I mean, why? I mean, who wouldn't be sad? You know, you're stuck in this in this singular truck for a week, doing nothing. Man, we'd go crazy. All right, I'm good for now. Good talk. Don't be a stranger. You take care, Tommy. I hope I hope you get happy, man. Uh, Kim, what are we gonna do about our about the money situation? You got any You got any ideas? Um. Can you go sell any more things at the pawn shop? I mean, I don't think we really have much to sell anymore. I mean, we got, so, uh, we got this cassette case, which I think I want to keep, because, you know, this is some song in 43, I think, uh, you know, maybe, maybe I can yeah. fix it. I don't want to get rid of his handkerchief. No. Uh, it's a postcard for 34 fucking cents, and a photo of a happy couple, I don't think I want to sell that either. This belongs to somebody. Ugh. Ooh, kind of looks like that guy. Life. Doesn't need to be a struggle. <laughs> I'll be with you in a moment, officer. Let me just finish my sandwich. Talk to Angry Hog Rene first. Mm, okay. You ready? Bye. Have you no shame? Whining about your back every time you bring out the measuring tape. Rene, you're a man with a fork in a world of soup. Please, 
Let's just try to enjoy the game, all right? What I'm game? Are you throwing to rocks into a hole? It looks like they're playing some form of You're bocce old. ball or something. I can see that. We're both old. Now stop grabbing your ass like it's a girl. <laughs> These manly men are playing balls. This is a ball game. Grab a ball and play it. Don't ask questions. Shoot all right, I got this. this. Shouldn't I ask what questions. game it is first? No, you got this. There's like I said, you got this. You're the game. Yes. Okay, grab the ball and show them how it's done. Fuck yeah. You are immediately surprised by the ball's lack of weight. No matter. You'll make it work. Damn right we will. God, this is right. You feel the familiar tremble of excitement and adrenaline <laughs> that precedes every victory. See, electrochemistry, Time life is more than just drugs, fast. man. Feel the ball. The cold metal ball is surprisingly smooth against your neck. It has a pattern on it. Probably a sponsored ball. Yours would only be covered with bumps of learning and scars of victory. Already, your muscles are adjusting to the weight. The nervous system calibrating. Until you and the ball have merged Let go, into be the a ball. single entity. The man ball is ready. The man ball is ready. Be the ball. <laughs> Why'd you throw it out there? Meld! Or stay the meld! <laughs> hey. Whorehouse of shit. Hmm. It wasn't whorehouse of shit. The shot was at least 23 meters. Probably 24, and then some. Nothing to be embarrassed about. Not bad for my age. What the hell is your problem? But why'd he throw it out there? They're throwing it into this little hole right here. Not a weak tri not a weak right triceps, that's for sure. I don't care if you are a cop. You do not just ruin someone's day. <laughs> Wait, so what? I'm, this I'm sensing victory. anger. I'm sensing anger, and I don't understand why. You vandalized our game, son. We can't flip a tonk with five bull. <laughs> Thought it was shot put. Well, it damn well isn't. It's petonk. You ruined a petonk. <laughs> we want our bull back. Take it easy, Rene. This is just a misunderstanding, isn't it, officer? Yeah. No harm done. Of course there's harm done, you oil slug. You are like a goddamn <laughs> bull. I don't know. I want to help him out. I want to be a nice guy. Okay. I will, I will, try, I will to try to fix this. It's going to be like low on my priority list, but I will make this right. I am sorry. Only if you admit that was a damn good throw. Good. Mistakes are forgiven. And men at least try to right their wrongs. I believe you will try. Now, why did you approach us? Well, at least he's rational. Yes. True. Why did you come here? It's unlikely they know anything about the murder. Renee, I found your guard booth. Yes. The Debardeur's union pays me to stand with you during the night. Not out of any political allegiance, mind you. I'm an old man. Don't sleep more than a few hours every night anyway, and... Money is tight. You must have seen something on the night of the murder. Your booth looks right into the yard. Yes, it does. Unfortunately, I wasn't working that night. Been on a two-week leave since last Monday. Hold on. Why are you on a leave? It's a private matter. Nothing to do with your investigation. Yeah. You see, officer, why? Rene Who was working the kind then? Of man would rather die than admit he needs medical assistance or, God forbid, sick it. A real man's man is just gonna ride it out. I'm fine. God damn it. Mind your own business. <laughs> Nothing. Just got to cut back on coffee. So if you had heart problems there, buddy. Yeah. So who was working your shift that night? No one. The boss has been on man since last Monday. There's no other guard. It's just me. It's just That's you. That's fucking no ridiculous, one has but okay. Been the container yard since last Monday. Yes. It's. It's not actually an issue. I mean. Interesting. Look, officer, the container yard 
doesn't actually need a guardsman. Never had one before, René. Monsieur Claire had that booth built specially for him. It's mostly decorative. Mostly decorative? The possibility of someone being in there is enough to discourage any ill-minded individuals. Uh-huh. Hebrard uh -huh. created this job for René because he knows the Royal Carabiner's pension of honor and PTSD isn't something a man can live off. A decorated kingsman collecting there reflects bad on the whole neighborhood. His world. So either we love Evrar, yeah, he gets it, or such dependency only weakens a man further. Uh, we need a program, and he should rent out his services. Yeah, Rene should run out of services. Invest the profit, get a few more guys, expand and repeat. Wage work is a dead end. Yes, yes, yes. Can we conclude the topic of my guard boots now? He is not <laughs> going to become an entrepreneur. Should we ask him about the picture? It might piss him off. Uh, no. Yes, yes. Like I said, it would be up anyway. So might as well keep an eye out. It keeps my senses sharp. Do you know anything about the man hanged in the backyard of the Whirling and Rags? Unfortunately, I don't. And like most of the locals, I have no qualms about assisting law enforcement. But this affair has passed me by completely. And most of the locals? In Martinez. The union is the law, so can you really blame them? But you don't have a problem with cops. Cop is a pejorative term. I don't have a problem with policemen. On the contrary, I admire the effort to bring order to our streets. He doesn't uh, know sure. about the crime. Your time is better spent discussing politics. What about police women? I'm confident they are indispensable in regard to all the paperwork and other administrative duties. Oh, there is no duties RCM women couldn't carry out. But you must agree that nature, in her infinite wisdom, has made men more fit to perform certain more challenging tasks, don't you? Sure. No, no I don't think there's any evolutionary in inequality at play here. Really, officer. <laughs> Match an average woman against an average man in a dark alley and see who comes out on top. Gender equality is a very noble, very modern idea. But in real life, primal roles prevail. Yeah, we will but see who comes out on top. Discuss this matter further. Yeah, okay. I think uh, it's, it's yeah. average man, average woman, that's such like a blanket term. Like, what kind of a true neutral man and woman would be a great. Because they're. Be Thank you for your time! Jeez, everybody sucks. Yeah, no doubt. Fuck this shithole city. I, I, wait, do, do we live here? Never mind. Anyway, uh. Well, the day's almost over. There's not really much to do. And there, there's gonna be. And we can't get bottles. There's gonna be one little quest that uh, we're gonna do to get some money. So don't worry about that so much. Let's just go ahead and talk to Joyce again. I mean, we talked to Evra Clary, we should have okay. some more things to say. Good. What can I help you with? By the way, I talked to Evra Clare. You have? And how did you like Mr. Clare? I didn't. I didn't. Oh, come on now. He has his uses. How else would he have stayed in power all these years? Or wait, actually, corruption. That's how he's done it. Fantastic, verm like corruption. Reaching into the bowels of the earth. Are you telling me that Evraclair is corrupt? No way. It's ridiculous. The position of my unusual colleague does not reflect official policy. I hope you understand. The RCM does not pick sides. Of course. And I don't expect you to share anything he told you with me. I'm not a corrupt verm myself. However, if you felt like discussing something, how could I stop you? Are we not human? Are we not curious to hear another person's take? It's only natural. We would only be gossiping. Gossiping. Oh, of course. You better dish, girl. Actually speaking, it would be quite interesting to hear what she has to say about these things. Tell her she'll like you for it. Hmm. <sighs> Mr. Everard is helping me find my gun. Oh. 
That's so helpful of him. <laughs> the lieutenant looks at you, yeah. and you can swear his jaw muscle is trembling. <laughs> you were not supposed to say why that, the, really. Why the fuck did you do that? He's able to contain the anger and surprise. Unconventional police officers sometimes lose their guns. They then go around and tell people about this to gauge their reactions. It's all part of it. Uh-huh. Incredible. Simply incredible. And how is it going? Has this detecting produced a gun? <laughs> Mr. Albert is helping me find my gun. <laughs> <laughs> Three, please. Mr. Everett is helping me find my gun. Oh, uh, yes. As you said. If he gets in a loop, it will. Yes. Totally slanderous. Maybe you've gotten into one tiny loop once. This is slanderous. Of course. Thank you for the advice. I'm glad you were here to assist. Your other dealings with Everard are still of considerable interest to me. The lieutenant will be more lenient toward sharing those. <laughs> Mr. Everard, I think that's just a repeat. Yeah. Okay, talk about something of else. Of course, detective. Until then, is there anything I can help you with? It's it's weird I can't talk about her containers. I figured that'd be something I would definitely, you know... So, all right, let's talk about Wild Pines then. Maybe then we can weave the container painting business in there as well. What we do. I'm afraid I don't speak for Wild Pines as a whole. It, it's a giant undertaking. There was a touch of discomfort there. She wants to merely represent. So what do they do? The Pines' core competency is logistics. Container shipping, freight, that sort of thing. See those airships there, blinking? Those are the shipping side of things. And that is the terminal. Another subdivision deals with energy, oil and gas exploration, offshore platforms. The Wild Pines Group is one of the original Revisholian Indo tribes. Companies awarded royal monopolies by the king, the suzerain. Oh, shut himself. up, Encyclopedia. You're in good company, it seems. Why, thank you. How much money does Wild Pines have? I'm not at liberty to discuss the company balance sheet, but I can tell you that last year Holy the company shit. booked more than 20 billion real in revenue. Numbers like that mean nothing to me. Yes, past a certain point, numbers begin to seem imaginary, but they are quite real for the 72,000 employees who depend on Wild Pines yep. for their paycheck. Ooh. A conglomerate the size of Wild Pines is like a shark. If it stops moving and growing, it will die. Then what becomes of those 72,000 families? It is a tremendous responsibility. Where does Wild Pines get all these billions? They started as an exploration and cargo fleet conducting trade between the Samaran and Insulindian Easterlers 250 years ago. When Pine ships Fascinating. centuries of care, Holy shit, deliberation, what? and madness have gone into this endeavor, vessels pass through the great unrest to reemerge with apricots in tow. The logic of the oh, system royal. is totalizing. It's yeah, it probably helps to start out with a royal monopoly. Employee, you know more than you let on. Certainly it helped, but most of the original Indo tribes have failed or been absorbed. To survive, Wild Pines had to grow and adapt. No suzerain did that. All right, that's all you need to know. That's something else. She nods. Uh, you know something about these tattoos? That's the man who was killed. I'm afraid this is a discussion for once we've cleared the lynching question. So you know something about the tattoos? Better not tie the horse Ooh. day to the back. Oop, breakthrough about the superstar. You're on a boat. There's something else I can help you with. You're on a boat. Why, yes I am. <laughs> Does she have a name? The boat? No. It is called Cordelati 19 because that's the type of sloop it is. Okay, but what kind of boat is it? It's a pleasure craft. A 19 pacer. It also happens to be rated for category one racing. Though these days I mainly use it for business. Ooh. How do you like it? My sloop? I like it a lot. It's the eel's hips, baby. Hey. I'm enjoying this part of the interview. It has so little to do with the mother we're investigating. You have a license for this boat? 
officer. I assure you, I'm a highly qualified pleasure craft operator. The crowns of her teeth are puzzling, white as the boat's hull as she smiles. Hmm. Her nonchalance might That's be not answering to my something question. called the Wayfarer Act. A law that says she, she doesn't, doesn't need a license. license. Yeah. You're not aggressive. I think I have a handle on the boat thing. Good. All right. Thank you. That's all for now. Some kind of superstar. Some kind of superstar. Oh, shit. They say the world isn't ready for a rock and roll cop. No one wants their state monopoly on violence. To rock and roll cop now. They claim to rock and roll hobo cop. Rock and roll hobo to cop. To the ranks of demigods and have sexual encounters with barely legal cover girls. It would be insane, they say. To all this, you say, fuck off and die. And <laughs> You Fuck off and have die. No idea how good these cops are gonna get. They're gonna crack 20 cases a day. In 20 the future, cases cops a will be day. Like astrophysicists or prime ministers or prophets. And you're the first one. So we lose some logic because of that, because it's self delusion. But our learning cap for a few things has been raised a bit. So that worked out. Oh, and composure too, yeah. We can go over at our brain over here, our brain matrix. We can level up some things. We got two things to level up, and we're we're about to do another one uh, here in a second. But I like to have some skill points on hand in case we need them. Usually to recheck some things. I don't like we have no we have no suggestion though. We can do one like that. Not work. All right, come on, Kim. I gotta find some money somehow. Well, maybe we can, uh... A sturdy metal door. I've already knocked on that door. Maybe we can, uh... Try to get off the hook again. Ooh. Money! Money and drugs! You see a young man on a balcony, nursing a cigarette. His eyes have been following you. For a while. Not looking for any he trouble. Looks like Mads scene. Mickelson. A little bit of like a young yeah. Mads Mickelson. It's the voice of someone who has something to hide, my liege. <laughs> Three. What? Too late, young man. Troubles found you. Sorry, I don't have time for this. I just want to finish my cigarette and be gone. Don't let him go. This could be your witness. The balcony has a great view of the whole thing. Actually, the police really need to talk to you. Is it really that important? Yes! Like a nervous cat, he keeps stealing looks at the neighboring windows. All right, but make it quick. Once I finish this cigarette, I have to run. Can you tell me your name? My name? My name is Martin Martinez. Martin Martinez, Okay. Huh? That's definitely not Really? You're not actually called Martin Martinez, are you? No, of course not. Could you please lower your voice? It looks like you got a good view of the Rolling in Rags uh, backyard. Can you tell me anything about the hanging? I can tell that you finally got him down. Thank you. It was quite a disturbing sight, even by Martinez's standards. What were you doing last Sunday? Oh. You already asked me that, didn't you? Wait, is someone else investigating the loot? What? I'm pretty sure I didn't. No, not you. Some more muscular type. Hmm? What? And when did you speak to this more muscular gentleman? Last week? I don't know. Look. Hmm. Are we talking about... He's an actor. Is it the dude on the bridge? A soliloquy. See how you hang on his every word. You didn't answer the question. What were you doing last Sunday? I had a friend over. Yeah, what kind of friend? It was my Sunday friend. Sunday friend? A Sunday friend. How intriguing. <laughs> What's your friend's real name? Did you see something? He doesn't reply. Gesturing, no, with his cigarette. Under the dull and darkening sky, the neighboring windows stand silent. All right, we'll talk later, Martin Mayonnaise. No. Martin Mayonnaise. We won't. 
Wouldn't that be like calling a guy uh, Yorkie, New York? <laughs> now, if you'll excuse Aaron me, Aaronson. I really need to get Chic Chicago. Well, maybe we can uh, convince him to stay. Maybe putting that point in suggestion was a good uh, idea. Please! Please! Oh! 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 Hey! Yeah! Ooh, it's a good roll! Hey, li <clears throat> hey, listen! I'm just trying to make things okay again. Can we meet again somewhere else? For a moment, the man on the balcony seems almost vulnerable. Something moves in the depths of his feline eyes. Compassion and a hint of understanding. I am sorry, but I really don't have the information you're looking for. <sighs> Damn. But, hold on. What's that? For a split second, his hand lingers, as though gesturing towards a stone placed right next to the front door. It's a sign. Good luck with the investigation. There's a key or something in there. I think he sees, huh? Let's see. Bye. I love you. Wait, no, what? No, 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 I, mean, I didn't mean that. Is, is he gone? No. He walked He's in. gone. We should run after him. See where he went. No point in running. Tenements like these often have multiple exits. If he doesn't want to talk to us, then he'll know how to hide himself. So we just give up? He could be a witness. Him or his Sunday friend. Either way, we need to look into that muscular type who's asking about our case. He did leave yeah. us Yeah. Did you see that? He wanted to draw our attention to that stone right over there. Hmm. If we find a way inside the building, we can ask around for his apartment. Great, let's do that. Rock. A stone, like any Turn other, it over. lying in a whirl of sleet and mud. Maybe there's something under it. Maybe there is. There's a key beneath it, rusty from the dirt. Yeah. This must be for the front door. Pity it doesn't have the apartment number on it. This building has many apartments, and a man can be in any of them. How are we going to find the right one? We'll just have to go in and see. Okay, I got the well, key. Well, obviously he's up more. Because he no, went we around can... over there. We can go in here now. Ooh. We'll explore this place in more detail, probably tomorrow. I'm gonna get some things while we're in here, just another little once through here. Take some coins. What's this? Take some of that too. Yeah, just give me all the money. Everyone's, Months. Just, everyone's leaving their cash out here. It's just it's irresponsible. Someone should talk to somebody. You, lady, what do you know? Give me a moment. The cold never does any good for my bronchitis. <laughs> Are you all right? Should I call a doctor? I'm fine. Fine. Don't you worry about me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fine, I won't. You Bye. From me, policeman. She's the cleaning lady. She knows the floor plan and the residents. Who are you? I'm no one. Just an old woman who cleans these hallways. Do you live here? If you can call it living. I have uh. a little room upstairs right next to the Is any of this room. really living? It's barely bigger than a closet. But I don't complain, no. I have my bed and my aching bones to keep me company. And that's all I need from this world. She hasn't spoken Your to anyone. Aching for a while. bones, okay. Even her sentences feel rusty. Uh, I'm looking for a young male in his mid 20s. Dark hair, skinny build, a smoker on the balcony. Yes, yes. I know who you mean. The scrawny boy who's always smoking like the devil, right? Somewhere That's in sure. the building, what I kind of said, sure. Crying. You hear a radio tuned to a talk show and someone taking a shower. Oh, what's he in trouble for? He's wanted for murder, he's going away for life. What? No, no trouble. I just want to talk to him. You know where he lives? Talk, <laughs> Jesus. What's so funny about that? He lives upstairs in room 28. Go to the balcony. It's one of those doors there. 
They should stay out of my way, Ken. Thank you. We should go check out his apartment on the balcony. See if he's home. Okay, let's go. Should probably focus on this guy. That's the exit, and that's the balcony. Hello. The streets will flow red once more. Cindy a great the current rushing down Rue de Esperance. You wait and see. The streets will not flow red with anything. Who are you? I'm Cindy the fucking skull. <laughs> Cindy what the else fucking do you skull. Know? Date of birth, blood type, the last time I was tested for Yeah, that third C. thing. Let's we'll start with your blood type and go from there. <laughs> go where? Accosting a minor? <laughs> go where, really? Partner, pig man. Keep your grubby hooves off little old ladies. A brush, an artist. The red splatter is urban expressionism. Urban expressionism. Look, there's even a skull back there. Oh. That smell coming from her paint bucket. It's not paint. It's heavy fuel oil. Yep, that's fuel oil. Red dyed heavy fuel oil is only used in government vehicles, or at least that's the idea. Is that government fuel oil? What did you think I was using? Aquarelles? Sucked it out of a cop's fuel tank myself. Back from Jamrock. Aww. Fumes are bad for you, okay? Something to think about next time you're driving around in your pretty little piggy carriage. You know anything about the recent murder? I ain't no snitch. Pigstein. Pigstein. Go forth and forage in some What is it? Uh, her and no fucking Kuno? I wonder if she's a part of his gang or vice versa. Right? Or, or maybe she's just who, who she is and Kuno's like, I want to fucking be like her! She's so fucking cool! That's true, too, yeah. Actually, there is a shortage of people who talk to us in a normal, calm, informative manner. It is almost like this is a point-and-click adventure game of some sort. We weren't put on this earth to make your life pleasant. Fucko. Fucko? What are you doing to the wall, anyway? Can't you tell? I'm painting a beautiful mural, an aereo graffitio visible from low orbit. I haven't really started it yet. I'm waiting for the right words. So you don't know what to write? Have you ever tried your hand at graffitio? When faced with a blank wall, most people write unimaginative stuff, like pigs go home and Mono is here. We rarely see pigs around here, though. Just union cards. And my name's not Mona, so... Okay, I have an opinion on this. Wanna yeah. hear it? Yeah? I love public art. Don't mind us. Keep doing what you're doing. Thanks. I'm sure the inspiration will come to me now that I have an official RCM stamp of approval. <laughs> I don't think him like that much either. She means the opposite. Catch you later, Cindy. Watch your back, ungulate. You've got eyes on you. Ooh. Yeah, those eyes. You're staring at right into my fucking soul. I love her. The, the, the few sparks and embers of what remains of it. I love her. Door is locked. I cannot get in. Cool. Someone lives back there. Ooh. Tarp slap in the wind. Kim, get out of my way so I can look at this. And get more money! Hey! This is still nowhere near enough money, though. This must be where she lives. The cleaning lady. You think? Cindy, maybe? Ooh, laborer jeans. What? I finally got some new pants. Oh no. Holy shit. They give me plus one electrochemistry because of my god ass, but they take out <laughs> one of my reaction speed. Okay, reaction speed's been helping me out lately. Electrochemistry yeah. is just getting me in trouble, so yeah. It, just, it wants me to wind up back to where I started when the game began. Well, that's... Yeah. It wants you to do drugs and fail. So I don't want to do drugs and Go fail. Go upstairs. Oh, you already went upstairs. There's another balcony around here somewhere. I think it's towards the back. Walking around back here.
Hmm, it's just a bathroom. Oh, okay. The public bathroom. With some alcohol! Uh oh. Ooh! Ooh! I'm gonna save that for a special occasion. Where the heck is the balcony here? Oh, here it is. Maroon of glow of light pollution. Distant trafficking. Night's beginning to fall in the city. Welp. Up here is where our gentleman lives. This door is made of metal and appears to be reinforced. Someone here really values their security. Number 28. This is where the cleaning lady said the smoke... Well, most the apartment house. doors are made of metal. Let's see if anyone's home. Knock on the door. No one answers. Looks like the young man we are looking for isn't home. I think our best chance to catch him is in the evening. Is this not the evening? Uh. We should return tomorrow after we have finished with our day's work. How about 9 p.m.? Sound good? What do you mean? The smoker on the balcony. This is why we are here, right? He might know something about the murder. So tomorrow, 9 p.m.? Sheesh. Worry. It's mostly all still here. You can I don't think things. I can make it. You've got this. Okay. Sounds good. Tomorrow. 9 p.m. Tomorrow, 9 p.m. Right here. Apartment number 28. Good. Let's go. Gotta make a note of that, don't I? It's, uh, okay, yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, day 2. 2100. Apartment 28. Be there. Got it. Damn. Turns out it's quite tricky finding someone in a big apartment building. Don't worry. You'll get Shh. her. Room Thanks, reaction speed. Tomorrow. He's probably gone for today. Okay. He's gone for today. You know, Kim, uh, we are running out of daylight. It's getting kind of worrisome now, you know? What are we... What are we... What, 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 what are we gonna do? takes us back out here. Lovely. Cool. Well, Alright, let's head back to the Whirling and Rags and maybe beg for some money or something. I don't know. Maybe something will work. <sighs> Ooh, maybe I could uh, take out that one and give it to, you know, to replace the one that I threw away. No. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, look at it. It's all pretty. It is all pretty. Say. I've got a sing, man. You should totally sing karaoke here. The first chance you get. Your emotions need to be expressed. People need to know your vast oceanic soul. My soul is immense. Yep. Utterly. And it needs to be heard. It needs to be heard. Through a PA system. Yes. By other people. By other people, yes. This goes well with a theory I'm developing, that I'm a down-on-my-luck superstar person. Yep. Who is mistakenly identified as a cop for his prominent jawline? Yes. Sounds likely. You should probably go on stage and pose for a moment when you're done with this thought. What should I sing? See if it works. What should I sing when it comes to it? You should sing the sad small church song from that tape you found. Thought it was obvious. I was thinking maybe I could what? sing something happy, get the crowd going. No, no. Don't sing the happy song. It's stupid. What? Stupid. Sad song. Thanks, Island it's Empire. What Inland, the hell? Inland Empire. In oh, sorry. Which I come to find out is a David Lynch movie. Inland Empire. You would need another copy of the tape first, though. The one upstairs is destroyed. They may compose? This feels right. I belong here. So you can't sing, but we just went through all that? Oh, what's over there? I help you? Oh, here's your trash container key. Thanks. I hope you found what you were looking for. I found the victim's clothes. How strange. I certainly didn't put them there. You sure? Could, you, could someone on your staff have put them there? Sylvie had the keys before I got here, and I can vouch for her. I can vouch for all my staff. 
None of us would tamper with the crime scene. Who else has the keys to the trash container? The trash collection service, CS Municipal. I don't see why they would put anything in the trash, though. Ah, the elusive CS Municipal. I doubt we'll be able to track down who was sent here last and when. This will have to be one of those little threats that solves itself down the road. I think it'll be a couple of days before we figure out how to solve this one. Uh. Thank you, anyway. Thanks. Let's talk about something yes. else. Oh, by the way, I am going to sing karaoke here. Absolutely out of the question. Why you always gotta... What? Y you always gotta ruin my fun, man. Absolutely. Then why have it? Why do you have it? The question. First we find a Maybe it's because we... Banner. Then we sing this place to do karaoke. <laughs> Your body is ready, sire. Your body is ready, sire. I love it. Okay, uh... Can I help so you? about that money I owe. Yes. Have you got it? How much do I owe you again? A lot. A lot lot. For the room, drinks, and bread. Like what? Hmm. Um. We need to do something about this, Kim. Please help me. Please, dear God, help me. Yeah. We can go into the kitchen back here. Oh, what's in the sink? Look for more money. Oh. Oh, there's gotta be money more up money. there. More money. You got any money, man? A thin man is smoking below an exhaust hood, occasionally sipping from his mug. This must be the Whirling's cook. As you step in, he nods toward the table and says something in a completely foreign language. The only words he can make out are Garanzi and Kubek. Okay, it's definitely not his name. Whatever you do, please don't call him Garansi Quebec. Please, it's not funny. Hello, sir. Got time for a few questions? The man puts his cup down and replies something. His left hand drawing arcs in the air. You got some impressive pots there. He smiles and bangs his ladle against each of his pots in turn. Okay. It's almost like music. Especially with the Okay, what a waste of time with him. Don't work. think I need anything else. It's Stay masculine. Stuff. Go back there. Can you go? Into you see a heavy steel door with a prominent dimple lock. It's painted blue. You yeah. immediately feel drawn to the color. Blue. I wonder where this door leads. You do? It's a door in the back of the kitchen. Why do you care where it leads? The winch. Outside. In the backyard. Remember? No. Your Three. fingers do. There was a winch outside on the roof. Like that of a small elevator. Hmm. Well, if there was a winch, I suppose we could look into it. As a side investigation. It's hard to side Kim. investigation. You already have a name for it. The door and the main investigation will merge into a stereo investigation. <laughs> If you say so, Gart is the Jesus. person to ask about this. The cafeteria manager. Touch the door. The cobalt blue surface feels rough to touch. The stainless steel door is flush with its frame on every side. Old cobalt paint, rough on the fingers. 40, 50 years since this was painted, maybe. Been here for a while, then. It leads really? to the side building, adjacent to this one. The Try old the building next to this. The door does not budge. Hmm. Well, shit. Dead end after dead end after dead end after dead end. Go upstairs? Can I help you? I've seen something here at the Whirling Guard. A thing I need to talk about. What thing? There's a mysterious blue steel door in the back of the kitchen. Oh, yes. That door. Sure. There's nothing mysterious about it. It's just a door. Do you know what's behind it? Do you have... No, I don't have a key. I don't know how to get there. And I don't care either. It's not like I've been wondering about it for ten years. It's, it's not... Yes, you have, sir. Or some boring storage space with a bunch of old junk and dust. Junk and dust. Well, well, I thought it was the kitchen the fucking the freezer, but... It's absolutely not convincing. I think you'd like to know what's back there. Fine, okay, a little. But my job doesn't leave me time for wondering about one locked door in one of the cafeterias I manage. 
So I haven't opened it. I have cleaned it up again. place a hundred times yeah, over. Yeah, we did. After the animals. And I haven't found a key, so good luck with that. What? By the way, you should come back to this thing based questionnaire if you see anything interesting in the whirling later. Alright, makes sense. Oh boy. Is this guy still out? That sugary black rum stain on the counter makes you teary eyed with joy. It's almost touching how syrupy and sticky it is. How long have you been up already? Two hours? An hour would have been bad. Two hours is mystical. You have truly wiped mystical. out all trace of yourself if you haven't thought about rum and lemonade yet. Actually, should I be thinking about this? Looks like drinking hasn't turned out too well for me. Maybe you haven't turned out well for your drinking. Have you thought about that? Don't get a goddamn rum it. and lemonade to yourself, boy. Or better yet, lick that stain off the counter. No, that could hurt us. There is a bottle of pouring rum on the counter there. I see it. You know, there's an NPC in our D&D campaign. We have a list of rules yep. for him. I was just about to say, don't lick it, Rue. His name is Rue Rari, and he's been known to get in hijinks. But one of the rules we have for him is to not lick stuff. Yeah. So, like. pra practice what you preach. What happened, man? You used to be cool. <laughs> Go get your boring normal person. What's cool about licking up discarded rum on a really get your drink on and your act together? I've got booze already. It's right here. Right, 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 right here. Oh shit. Plus one physique, minus one morale, and I have three uses of it. So maybe we'll hold on to that for a bit, because I got enough magnesium to counteract that. Of course, it also feels like if I drink it, I'll just immediately die. Yeah. Okay. So I'm waiting for a time to run down, because uh, at some point, Kim's going to be like, we should do something about your, your bill. Well, uh, we can radio some people. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone. A pull out toolbox. This is precinct 57. How may I assist you? All right. I need you to connect me to a civilian. A Sylvie. She may have reported a murder. Of course. What is her number, officer? Kim, didn't Gar give you a Sylvie's number? Yes. Hold on. Her number is 005-1944-298. Received. Hold on, officer. Lieutenant Kitsuragi slowly begins to tap a little rhythm with his right foot. <laughs> Quite a lot of time has passed. Really? Officer, I have Sylvie Malaika on the line for you. Yes, hello? Uh, hello, uh, this is a police calling. Uh, I have some questions for you about your last days at work. Oh, right. Hello, officer, what can I do for you? There is no resentment in her tone. She wants you to ask her out. No question yeah. about it. Electrochemistry, I don't think you were really on my side here. Uh, was it you who called the police? No, not me. But why didn't you call? Didn't the corpse behind your workplace bother you? What? Of course it bothered me. But I thought the union already knew about the corpse. What's this, what's yeah, this union what have to do with this? anything? Yeah. No one calls the police. The union would get angry. What do you mean by that? You know, what the union says goes. People listen to them and they take care of their own. Which Even though every member... Well, uh... Okay, let's not push this any further. Here's something else you can tell me about. I don't know what to tell you, officer. I didn't call you because I didn't want to get in trouble with the others. With the union. I'm sorry about that. Do you know who made this? Do you know who did make the call? No, sorry. I don't. <clears throat> Not a lot of people have phones around here. Copper thieves take the wires. Mm. People uh -huh. don't have the money to have the cables put in again. They use the union's phone, or the one on the coast. Hmm. So the union has a phone, and there's one further down the coast. 
And no one's it. taken that copper yet? That's fun. It was someone else. We'll find them sooner or later, officer. It just might take a while. Okay, next question. Yeah, go on. Not the gun. But you quit your job at the Whirling. Why? You mean, why did I leave the bar? Honestly, I'm not really comfortable discussing it with you, sir. Why not? Uh, okay, did you leave because of Gart? What? No, why would you even think that? He told me he asked you out. Are you saying it didn't happen? Please, don't bring Gart into this. It's none of your business. <laughs> okay, lady. I already she... said I don't want to talk about this. You're messing everything up again. Uh, okay. D messing everything up again? Wait, let's go, ba let's go back to that. Why aren't you comfortable discussing it with me? I, uh, let's just say I left because I needed to get away from someone. Get away from whom? You know whom. All right, I won't mm. push you on. Maybe, I don't know. So, um. I just know I have we already talked to her, it seems like? No, we haven't. But, uh... But she's saying stuff like we've talked to her before we got drunk or something. So, uh... The reason why she left is because she needed to get away from somebody. This unruly patron who just did just so much damage, belligerent, Us. drinking all the time. Fuck. Do you know how my paperwork ended up in the trash container behind the whirling? it completely. After I had unclogged the toilet and retrieved the paperwork, I threw it out in the trash, thinking you didn't need it. I am sorry about that. Anything else, detective? And that's why it was gross. I think I got everything I need, thanks. I do hope so. Please, don't call me again. Wait, Bye. maybe we can figure out why. No. Ah! Nope! She doesn't have a problem with you. It must be someone else she's angry about. Uh-huh. Some other guy. Like Gart. Uh, okay, but I'm a guy. Sure it isn't about me. Trust me. You wouldn't want to be the guy here. You <laughs> know how it is. Yak, yak, nag, nag. No. <laughs> what? You're the guy. Oh my God. You're Lieutenant Love. Matchmaker extraordinaire. Help We're a rock star cop. Unless she cop. turns into a spinster. I'm happy to help, but maybe I could do so without all this internalized misogyny. <laughs> no shit! What misogyny? I'm just telling things the way they are. Okay. Empathy. Empathy? You're not being really empathetic here. You have to act, Lieutenant Love. You have to calm that hysteric down. Tell it you've got everything under control. Then go and have a little boy's talk with God himself. Think you can do that, Lieutenant Love? Why is he calling me <clears throat> Lieutenant Love? You still there, kiddo? Listen, I've got everything under control. No. What? I know. No, no, why? What's with the baby? <laughs> you and Gar, right? A little trouble under the sheets? Say no more. Papa's got this, big papa. God, what is happening? Holy in your head? shit. Big, big papa is happening. Big. Rhetoric. Big papa. Is rhetoric is angry and electrochemistry <laughs> is happy. That's not good. <laughs> Oh God! Please, just stay out of my life. I've got a hunch your love life is about to take a very pleasant turn. Holy what? shit! What happened here? What You'll see, Lieutenant. You will see. Call was dominated by the other party. Anything else, officer? It's on. The love quest is on. Too late, everyone. Well, that oh my was, God! Um, that went places. Oh Department. my God! Over and out. In the cabin, you see a. Uh. Well, it's like... It, it's like late, man. We still don't have the money. What do we do? Do I really have to wait until 21 o'clock? I don't know. Can I help you? So I talked to Sylvie. Wink. God. Wink. Oh. God. <laughs> should be. Lay it on him. <sighs> but I don't want to lay that on him. Of course you do. This was your plan. How you. is this empathy? This is how you fix it for them. Turns out she's a whore who likes to ride the cock carousel. Oh my god! 
wonderful. Fucking wonderful. Kim. <laughs> fucking wonderful. Oh. What does that <sighs> mean? Cock carousel. What does that mean? Cock carousel. No time for lectures. The point is, <laughs> just drill the inside of your mouth with your tongue. Huh? Yeah. Ah! This feels right. It feels wise. Holy Let's crap. No time Let's for lectures. Point is, you're losing at our nasty mind games. Sylvie's like total psycho. God, does it mean you talk to her? What else did she say about me? What else do you need? You don't want to know. The man leans his hands on the counter and sighs. His head drops between the shoulders. Oh, poor man. And defeated. She broke the bird, you know. The great skewer. I found it on the ground with a broken wing. On the morning she left. I should have known. It was her way of telling me to piss off. I should stuff it up my ass. Or you broke the bird. It can also be that. I think Sylvie even. Oh yes, God, we broke the, the bird. bird. Is connected to this. It's a symbol of hope, and she broke it. Or you know, maybe I broke it. <laughs> no, it was her. No, it was her. <laughs> She's off to ride that carousel you told me about. <laughs> cock carousel. I understand now. They ride the cock carousel <laughs> and tell the clock run down. Here, have the rest. And he gives me more alcohol. Now let me have a drink and think about this shit. No, he's moment. drinking himself. In my own. And there we have it. Isn't that beautiful? Another situation fixed by Doctor. No. Empathy, that was not your strongest move. No, it wasn't at all. Uh, maybe to kill more time, I can try and read my notes. It's the letter you found in the trash. A cabbage of papers hanging from the board with the permeables drawer inside. It's barely held to. Okay, let me see if my, if my clothes are uh, helping at all. Encyclopedia, okay, Civil Affair. Got any clothes that can help with logic, maybe? Here we go. Put on some smart glasses. All right, yeah. Put on the smart glasses and see if I can read my own uh, ledger here. It's the ledger you found in the trash. Oh, there we go. Yes. Hey! Together, using the alphanumeric code on the margin. It always begins with HDB Officer 41. Precinct. Yep. Then HDB 41 and time of arrival and on then the, the scene, date. followed by the title. For example, Wait, HBD 41. HDB weren't those 4, 1, Officer 1, Precinct? 2, why yes, your precinct number is 41. And HDB. Every last alphanumeric in the files begins with it. Harry. And these are your Dubois. Files. Hmm. It's safe to say HDB are your initials. Harry Dubois. HDB. Well, we can read one of these uh, case files here and see what they are about. This is, I'll just I'll probably come back to this, you know, to pass some time while we're waiting for something here, like for Ken to say we should do something about your your beer. So how about the next world mural? This one is relatively easy to reconstruct. Overnight on twelve oh two. A graffito, nay, a mural, appears on an eight-story tenement overlooking central Jamrock. The building is a sparsely inhabited ghost tower, part of a failed real estate development called Grand Couron. Cause of failure, rent too high. The mural is enormous. Two silhouettes, a man and a woman, are kissing. The text cut into their form reads, True love is possible only in the next world. For new people, it is too late for us. Wreak havoc on the middle class. Wreak havoc on the middle class. People call it that thing and that fucking thing. <laughs> it's visible for miles. In two days, the station's complaints desk gets clogged with requests to remove the bummer. The bummer? You and your partner are assigned to the case. The bummer to look at. The graffito crew is easy to track down. Only the bell lectures have the literage of industrial paint to cover the surface. One of the graffito artists is rumored to be rich. They take responsibility for the execution, but not the design. The ideologue of the next world mural, as the crew calls it, remains an unknown. Wait, do I ever find out who came up with it? The case files do not show you finding the author of the design. Damn. The crew agrees to clean up after themselves. However, your partner, 
JV is against the removal, citing public support for conservation. This leads to a debate in Precinct 41, which then spreads to the streets of Jamrock, ending in a rare plebiscite organized by you and the rest of Row 3. The 9,000 people subjected to the mural's message, all of Lakeside, Central Jamrock, and Villa Lobos, plus half of the eminent domain, participate in the vote. Although the case begins with what appears to be a lot of rambling on the streets as to how juvenile and stupid the mural is. Well, do we uh, keep this mural or destroy it? Do we want to wreak havoc on the middle class? Let's get rid of it. A staggering 78% of voters choose to keep it. I was going to say keep it, but... We're a loud minority. And that love truly is possible in the next world for new people. And it is too All late that for remains us. is to wreak havoc on the middle class. In any case, it appears to have been a rare case of civil... All right, it's 2131. Not much has changed in the meanwhile. This is not good. Yes? Uh... Can I help you? Yes. Have you got a lot? A lot? Yes. Hmm. Well, this ain't good at all. I feel like that's because we pissed off Kim so much, he's not going to help us. Well? I'm not sure what to do about that. Well, maybe we got to just spend one more half an hour. Let's read one more case file. What's the worst that could happen? It's the ledger you found in the trash. It takes about half an about hour. About the unsolvable case. AKA Leslie and Burke. AKA the public indecency drunk and the property damage drunk is a curse. So him? It has been passed from unsuspecting officer to unsuspecting officer for 10 years. Ooh. On January 29th, the unsolvable case made its way to you. Why you accepted it, it is unclear. Every officer, and indeed most civilians in Jamrock, know it's unsolvable. You were so drunk, you didn't remember what it was when you signed on. That, or you were high. Leslie will always take his pants off when he's drunk. Burke will always trash everything. It's just what they do. It is their nature. You cannot change the nature of a man. And you can't lock them away because public so you're two drunks always causing mischief. Damage are not Unless he takes his pants off, Burke always trashes everything. The only way for Leslie to stop flashing his genitals to bypasses and for Burke to stop dismantling signage and rear view mirrors would be for them to stop drinking alcohol. Yeah. Which, in their 40s or 50s, it's hard to tell because of their distorted features, is a medical improbability on par with you ceasing to produce the expression, threatening fines, dragging them to the station, locking them up in the hell holes they live in, locking them up in the station, hypnotherapy. So nothing you works to on these guys to get Zemiaki them to stop drinking. To them out. The Zemiaki gave them ethanol, so Burke and Leslie would expose and rampage even harder. You tried it all, and still the complaints wouldn't stop as they hadn't stopped for 10 years. It's plain to see from the files that you, Satellite Officer JV and Special Consultant TH had more important cases to attend to. You uncover cross-reference to several ongoing investigations, each brought to a standstill every time you drive down Main Street. Because there they are, on the corner of Perdition. And what is Leslie doing? Public indecency. Yeah. Good, you're learning. If the files are to be trusted, that's all there is to it. That and Burke breaking things, and the fact that they're both drunk. <laughs> but then again, so are you. True, yeah. The right. case becomes considerably less comic one day when Burke takes a swing at your ledger. He must have it confused with the property he likes to damage. But the joke's on him. The officer is also drunk. Way more drunk than Burke. Oh, then. God, really? And let's be oh. Fair, you also have party eyes you slam the heart the party eyes in his face then proceed to beat him 
unconscious. So he tries to break my ledger and I just Holy beat his shit. face in. The ledger sustains damage. The compartment within reserved for permanent. So that's weapons. why I had a hard it's time getting that jammed. heart open Stopping because I beat a man's face to death with it. To open it. But are unable to do so. The officer began to cry, reports Leslie, who at this point is tending to Burke. He came at us and at us. I think he was trying to kill Burko. While trying to kill Burko, you slowly come around. The permeable's compartment is open. God, I broke his kneecaps? Poor Burko's kneecaps. The good news is, Burke can't walk Oh, Jesus. Anymore. Three confirmed kills. Can't get out of his apartment. 198 injuries. With Burke to tend to, Leslie cuts back on the indecent exposure. Maybe he flashes his genitals to Burke. Who knows? But both drunks are off the street. So if you want to get a drunk off the street, just beat his face in and then his partner will take care of him. Also yep. why the officer responsible. Not much has changed in the meanwhile. Yeah. It's dark out. Yeah, Kim. We should think about putting it to the maybe. Nice as still miserably cold this time of year. I haven't paid the cafeteria manager for damages yet. We should take care of that then. But I don't have the money. Let's talk to him anyway. An officer of the RCM shouldn't be sleeping in the streets. We'll figure something out. Oh, thank you, Kim. You're a good friend. I don't know why you waited until literally the day's almost over, but that's right. okay. We still gotta do our end of day briefing and everything. Gart, I am the law. Can I help you? So about the money I owe. Yes, have you got it? I was wondering if we could come to some sort of arrangement for tonight. Does that arrangement include you paying me what we already agreed you owe me? Kim is about to say something. Let him. I understand your predicament as the manager. However, I feel I must remind you that we are here to conduct an important investigation that also affects your business. Forgive me for saying this, but your colleague seems more committed to drinking and- You gave me a bottle of wine! Yeah! I mean no offense. It's really nothing personal. I just have to protect the interests of this establishment. This conversation isn't going anywhere, is it? Not until you bring me the money. Okay. I might have something in my motor carriage we can use when you're done here. Oh, boy. Well, son of a bitch. I'm so sorry to do this to you, Kim. But you are a good friend, and I will try my best oh, starting tomorrow. Wait. So, Kim has something in his car we can pawn... So that way we can get some money and all that. It'll be more than enough, and we've collected enough money to kind of soften the blow a little bit. And what's cool is that we got enough money to pay for tomorrow, if we get that far. Inside, uh. you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone. I have something here we could sell. Look in the back, in the suspect transport enclosure. Transport enclosure? Regular people just call it the cage. Let's look in the suspect transport enclosure. The cage at the back of the motor carriage looks rather uncomfortable. Four shiny hubcaps are stacked against Ooh. the seat. The silver edges sparkle in the dark. I confiscated these four a little while back. We can take them to the pawn shop down by the Martinez Canal. What are those things? They are spinner hubcaps. Three ah. little things you put on your wheels. When the Spinners. wheels come to a stop, the caps keep on spinning. There's no real use for them, it's just for vanity. Honestly, that sounds like an amazing physics demonstration. Thanks, I appreciate your help. The lieutenant nods as you take the spinners. Now I have a debt to him. Not oh. really, because he confiscated them from somebody else. That's true, that's true. Wait, pawn shop's down here. It's so hard to maneuver around here. There's so much cracks yeah, and all that. Yeah, let's say there's so much shit in the room. There was an enormous war here, and they just kind of left everything as is. To show the pride of what we fought and what we had to do to get here and da 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 Hello, Roy. Good to see you, Roy. Uh, can I highlight you, Roy, please? I'm highlighting everything but you, Roy. Come on now. What the please. heck? There he is. Thank you. Hello, hello. Let me know if I can help you with anything. I have something yes, to sell. We'd like to sell these hubcaps. Roy takes the hubcaps from the lieutenant and inspects them. The spinners appear iridescent in the dancing light of his pawn shop. Yes, 
these are hey that's secret. just enough did you defraud some because we owe him 130 jump a mess banger no matter i'll give you 200 rael no one was defrauded or jumped i assure you <laughs> really kim of course i meant no offense 200 rael for you officer delightful doing business with you do come again thanks, thanks. Roy. Thank you. Here's the 130 real Thanks. for your business. Do not waste it. The rest is for him. To compensate. Oh, for he fucking to took the rest of the money. Hey, he, he he can have it. He and saved our ass. Of selling. All right. Another time. Don't got anything to sell. Let's get out of here. Let's pay the man and finish this day. Sheesh. Thanks again, Kim. You're you, you're a real good pal, and I real I feel really bad for your spinners. Well, they weren't his. Well, they're not anybody's now. They're Roy's. Well, they don't belong to me. Can they I belong to you? the pawn shop. Yes. Have you got it? I have your money. Well. Well, we got uh, two. We got three things we can do. Give it to him. Slam it down. And then here, here, here you go. Just here's the money. Here. Great. Thank you, officer. That's all I wanted. Payment for services rendered. If you continue to stay here, I just ask that you please pay your nightly bill in advance starting tomorrow. I'll unlock the electronic lock to your room. All the doors lock automatically at 9 p.m. Please pay for each night in advance starting tomorrow. 20 real per night. Okay. Well, that's great. We've got enough for two nights already, and we're almost getting onto a third. Already looking good so far. I'll take a room here, too. Of course. Always happy to have officers from the RCM as guests. Anything else I can do for you? Yeah, fuck off. Bye. All right. The day's about coming to an end, and uh, because we didn't get to pay on time... We don't have the opportunity to leave and do as much without the uh you should pick the that fat, watch. What? juicy cigarette butt from the tray. Oh my Light god! It. Electrochemistry! It's a fucking shit. cigarette, dude! The what now? The living shit. The, the what now? Pathway does not mince words. It you should smoke, smoke the living it. shit out of it. I fucking love electrochemistry. Am I a smoker? Who knows what you are? <laughs> a monster. A murderer. The gnome of Jeroma. The gnome you of Jeroma. Like a smoker, especially when you look at that juicy, succulent, seductive <laughs> cigarette stuff. God. Electrochemistry. Goodness, God, man. But she What's broke you? it at the filter. I can't smoke that. How very astute of you. This renders it ineffectual. You should look for a whole cigarette, or better yet, an entire pack. <laughs> Strike that. What a the content. fuck? Make sure I should not do that. That's no. Audit, then it's, it seems like we have yes, 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 and yes. I should not do that. I should not not, not do not, that. Not, do, not, not do that. Well, I'll I mean, think about it. Do the. I'll think about it. Out, out of all the things that electrochemistry makes us want to do, you know, it's like, oh look, there's methamphetamine. Look, there's that rum on the on the table. Lick it. This seems sensible. No, it doesn't! Have, have, have a smoke. That seems sensible compared to what else he wants us to do. Listen, listen. Well, I'll think about it. I yeah. have think never been that hard up where I looked at a goddamn ashtray in a hotel room and was like, yes. Well, you're also not a 40-plus year alcoholic either. Doesn't count no, but I smoked. And when you're done thinking about no. it, graduate to get in. Well, if it keeps electrochemistry fucking quiet, uh, maybe a puff on a cigarette wouldn't be so bad. Plus, smoking them gives massive bonuses. You better not be lying to me about this electrochemistry. You better not be lying to me. This is the door to the room you redecorated. Good night, Lieutenant. Just a moment. We should talk about our progress on the investigation. Let's go out to the balcony. All right, let's go. Well, if winners don't do drugs, then there's no winners the in the world. Outside is brisk. 
the lieutenant Sorry. is silent for a moment. He listens to the traffic hum. Then... Now then, we should talk about the investigation. But I also feel you're a bit... Hey, this will be the last thing we do for today. This is the right. end of day our debriefing that we have with Kim Kitsuragi. Just kind of going over everything, what we've done today, what we'll do for tomorrow. I didn't know you smoked, Kim. I have a cigarette every night when I go over my notes. It's something of a ritual. Oh, man. He looks so devastatingly <laughs> of that cigarette. I think I might want to pick up smoking. Do you have any, you have any more cigarettes? I apologize, but I only brought one this morning. I have exactly one cigarette every night while going over my notes. Well, what the hell? All right, then. The debrief. Yes. It's been a long and eventful day. How do you think today went? We performed a thorough initial inspection of the victim's body, so that's good. One could say it's the main thing to do in a murder. Then you shot the body down, which was quite the shock. I was inspired in your confidence in me, Kim. I admit I wasn't sure whether I should give you the gun. But I'm glad I did. We still have to go from the autopsy, though. And there's more work to be done by the crime scene. Right, make a note of that. Autopsy. Plus, uh, just basic CSI. Oh god, yeah. Alright, so autopsy and basic CSI. Got now, it. as for interviews, my list of people to talk to are really not in there, you know? That's not your forte. The initial interviews? Uh, yes, we well, we talked to some people. Including a Bartlett, a daunting adversary. No shit, I hate that man. Nah, the chair was the daunting adversary, trust me. He wasn't particularly forthcoming with useful information. No, he wasn't. He was a waste of time. He's not saying much on the matter because he thinks you could have gotten more. He's out a of tough ever. cookie, that one. I'm sure I can get him to tell us more. Claire also helped you, how should I say, remember your name? That's a relief. I don't know how I feel about my name, actually. That's normal. It's best not to <laughs> That's normal? What's unusual to you, Kim? About half the stuff I do. Okay, fair point. We talked to Joyce Monsieur, but didn't get any information from her. I have a feeling Joyce... So we talked to Everard, we talked to Joyce, got we nothing. So I'm going to go ahead and write down... Write down a... Get more... Out of... Everard... And get more out of Joyce. Joyce. Got it. If Kim is emphasizing something this much, it really must be important. I will underline Joyce if uh, the game is telling me really do Joyce. Above all, though, today was exhausting. What's with all the running? You run a lot. Is that a standard Precinct 41 practice? Well, you know, it's a place of foot traffic. I don't have my car here. A really you know? good theory about why you're running so fast, son. Just you wait until you get up to me. Uh, we, we, we like to run a lot. I mean, uh, yeah. I don't like to waste time, you know. My mind moves fast. The rest is to try to keep up. It's impressive, especially for a man your age and in those hills. Well, you know, nice hey. shoes, by the way. I like the green. Goes with the orange. Oh, thank you. Aww. Oh, goodness. So, what are our powers exactly? The RCM? They're quite limited, actually. The power officers of the Havashul Citizens Militia exercise most frequently is imposing fines of up to 1,000 real for offenses in accordance with an interdepartmental schedule. Wouldn't that be an easy power to um, abuse? Yeah. Yes, although indirectly, as citizens can always request records from their office station. Good, yeah, fair point. Officers of the RCM have been known to take bribes of less than the prescribed fine amount. It undermines trust in the RCM. Okay, let's make rules for our character. Rule one, no licking. Rule two, no bribes. You don't like no, bribes. No bribes, yeah. So I think t not taking that check was the right move. Okay, so uh, what else? We can arrest people, of course, but rather than bringing someone in directly, it's preferable to serve a station call here. It prevents confusion and overcrowding. Um. How can you be sure the arrestee will still show up? You can't. Those who don't show up become fugitives, though, and have fewer legal rights when they are eventually caught. It's about power projection. Thus I see. Far, and if someone resists? Power. As you may have gathered from the fact that we are expected to carry a record of our kills, like the one in your watermarks, we are permitted to use whatever force is necessary, and strongly admonished not to abuse that power. Wait, so if I kill someone while on duty, 
You have to supply compelling evidence for yep. why it was necessary to use lethal force. In these cases, your partner is usually your witness. Fair. Not a good position to be in, by the way. Internal Affairs handles these cases thoroughly by cross-examining you for inconsistencies. It is hard to cover for anyone, which is what And yet people still do it. Hmm. It's almost like that this uh, dystopian, nonsensical, uh, you know, stripped-down, politically, uh, you know, potpourri of a mess of a city of this still has better police officers than America does. Yeah. Huh. What happens to the people we convict? We don't convict. We arrest and send them to coalition government courts in Couron and La Delta. The prosecution works off our testimonies and records, which is why it's paramount to keep them. So we have to arrest them and take them to another part of the city? Well, who makes all these rules? The coalition government and the moral intern, more broadly. Yeah. The RCM was formed by the coalition government to restore order in the international zone after the revolution. So we did. Now we attempt to maintain that order. No more, no less. Or perhaps it is better to say we were allowed to form it's a point of contention whether the citizens of Revachol or the coalition government formed the RCM. Let's say it was the citizens of Revachol. Be sentimental if you like. Either way, the moral intern leases us the right to keep the peace in this city, and they will take it away if we misuse it. Or if they think you do. <laughs> Let's just look into the night. The dying lights of the city shimmer below. Slowly, like luminous clouds, they pass on his lenses. The lieutenant looks at his slim cigarette, contemplating the next drag. An aerostatic passes overhead, the whiskers of its floodlights on the ground below. Kitsuragi's glasses light up as he looks to the sky, two glowing circles. They really don't like us here. And the mouth on that kid, Kuno. It's different in land. In Talking about the Kuno! <laughs> Do, don't you sleep, Kuno? Kuno doesn't fucking sleep! Yeah, he's back there still just prodding that thing. Why are they like this? It's our fault for leaving this place to the dogs, to the union, to the company, not daring to come here more often. This place has fallen between the cracks, the jurisdictions of our two precincts. And in Jamrock and the Cree. We run this. Yeah, there's some places like that here too. Mm hmm. Plenty. It's incredibly hard. Human beings are... But we are in control, and it's worth it. The organization works. Our systems work. If they didn't, the city would disintegrate. Well, I hope our investigation will help improve the situation here. Mm -hmm. At least do some good. Me too. But I wouldn't count on any drastic changes in our lifetimes. Well, Not from just two little detectives going around, I don't think so. Reform doesn't happen overnight. Tired. But the dark and it's not just big changes, it's little changes yeah. over time. Well, thank you for this. Yeah, it's getting very cold now. Let's go. Alright. Time to go to bed. It's fucking late. It's only 11. It's, it's about, yeah, well, it's, yeah, it's almost 11. See you in the morning there, Kim. Take care. Bye. Yeah. Look at this dump. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, your face adorned with the expression. Well, we could put some more points and try and stop the expression. What's that door back there? This door? Locked. Oh, that's to, the, yeah, the connected. Yeah. Well, we're going to stop right here, because the second that we go into bed, the next day begins. So next week on Disco Elysium. We're day gonna, two. We're going to jump into day two and uh, follow some of these leads here. Maybe get a little bit of a grip on the situation and uh, maybe, uh, you know, exist a little better, perhaps. <laughs> Find our gun. Find our gun. That, that'd be good. Find our badge, too. Find a clue. That'd be good. Find a clue, yeah. Plenty can happen. So, uh, yes. We'll see you next time on Disco Elysium, where there's going to be more nonsensical mindfuckery <laughs> to be had. Bye. See you then.